Jordans, off whites, and more. If you're going to buy sneakers for a few hundred dollars, how can you be sure that they're the real thing? I'll tell you. Today's sponsor, GOAT.com. It's the safest way to buy and sell authentic sneakers online. With over half a million sneakers on the platform and 10 million users, you won't find better prices for verified 100% authentic sneakers anywhere else. Find 100% authentic sneakers at GOAT.com slash the read. That's G-O-A-T dot com slash the read. Put something fancy on your feet. And let's move on. Speaking of Blue Ivy, um, she absolutely was at the Rebel Art Gala where... She was not letting anybody, including Tyler Perry, outbid her for anything. I love it. I don't know. It was, I think it was like a Basquiat. No, it was a portrait of Sidney Poitier. And Tyler Perry told some story about how he just saw this piece of art and was like, oh my goodness, I have to have it. I'm so rich. Nobody is going to outbid me. Until Little you Blue thought. Ivy <laughs> in her gold wig turned at him and said, <laughs> oh, Medea. <laughs> Today is the day that you lose, honey. Blue Ivy turned around and said, guess who's coming to dinner, bitch? <laughs> she had been plotting on that portrait and she was taking that shit home. <laughs> she was, well, how cultured do you have to be at age six to know how to bid on art? Nigga, please. <laughs> this is what I love so much about this child. Is I feel like I just love seeing this little black girl with all of this access and just living yeah. this life of wealth. It's so normal to her to just bid on art and giggle and when the price is higher. Every oh, time, daddy. <laughs> every time Star Jones, who has to be friends with Miss Tina, would like say whatever mm-hmm. number they were bidding at, wherever it was at, Blue was just like, here's my hand. <laughs> like, I'm not even raising the paddle or whatever. It's just. You, you know, I have hand. a paddle, girl. It's me. And you see my hand. You already know. Y'all are looking this way anyway. <laughs> Don't play a game. You see my wig shimmering. So I will actually Ooh. be taking that. Medea, put your hands back down, okay? And go have a family reunion, bitch. Because so what's funny. not going to happen is you leaving here with my stuff. So actually, funny. I will outbid you on everything that you raise your hand at because now you're getting on my nerves. So give me my things. Um, Daddy, I don't even know why you're reaching over here trying to take things from me. You already know. <laughs> when he was holding her little hands it. down and she was cracking up like, you could do whatever you want. <laughs> no, that's funny. <laughs> Really. Anyway, so 19. You and your little hug. Thank you so much. Yeah, put it on the book, Star. Thanks so much, love. I just, I just can't get enough. We got an email from somebody who was there and said that really Blue Ivy was in a bid and war with Tyler Perry all night. I knew it. Apparently they went back and forth on that one piece. I'm telling you. And then Tyler Perry won and then Blue bid on the next one and won that one. Mm-hmm. And then Shea Moisture came on stage and they donated 60000 Tyler Perry was like, oh, I'll double that. And then Blue was like, I'll double that. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you just being funny or if this really happened, but I feel like it did. <laughs> I feel like she was like, Tyler dated one one twenty. It did to me. Put me down for two no, put me down for two fifty. Thanks so much. <laughs> yes, blue I love you a lot. Oh, when she and her mama smile, they look exactly alike. The same. My God. The same. It is just something else. It she really is, is like a blended, like Jay Z, Beyonce, Macchiato in the face. She really is. But just, I just, I'm trying to fathom being six years old and spending three hundred thousand dollars in one night. Like, and who go check me? And her mama is literally just sitting there giggling, like, "Oh, we got it." Because Blue, Blue's been a millionaire by herself since birth, so they ain't even got to spend their money on her art. That Sydney Poitier portrait, if she wanted, that's going in her room. That's my art, nigga. That's not for Beyonce and Jay. Next to all of the other art hung up in her room that right, Jay Z has already talked about. Right, we already know she's got Basquiat. Blue is and a collector. This. She is. She has taste. She's refined. She knows what she likes, and she's going to get it. It's that simple. In that gold wig, uh, I die. Mm. Today uh, was not your day, Medea. <laughs> Tell Cora. I said, "What's up? Good night." And Tyler Perry was like, "I know this baby this is not. Girl is this, not really out here. This child is like really this. just going." I am. I am. I actually am. Mm -hmm. Star is the one who called you Uncle Tyler. Tyler. (laughs) I didn't do that. Right. (laughs) Good day, sir. And you have a great night as well. I just love her. First things first. I just, I'm going to pass it over to a good friend of mine. Uh, Okay. Blue Ivy. My 
fave. Yeah. Um, What's up with my girl? So, Tiffany Haddish. <laughs> She's not thin ice with the hive. No, listen, I don't know. what. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and assume that this GQ thing... This interview recently mm-hmm. that just came out happened prior to Top Off. Right. And happened prior to, you know, they interview the girls months in yeah, advance. Yeah, this, this was probably two or three months ago at least. Right. So in a recent interview, uh, Tiffany Haddish once again spoke about her time meeting Beyonce and how some actress at this party was doing the quote mostus. Um, that is how she talked. <laughs> and she said she bit Beyonce in the face. Beyonce stormed away, went up to Jay Z. She said that Beyonce was like, Jay, come here, this bitch. <laughs> Mood. <laughs> At some point, she went over to Jay-Z, according to Tiffany, and told him that some random acting half a bitter in the face. And then Tiffany offered to go and beat the actress up. But then Beyonce suggested not to make a scene and that the girl was just high. I don't know. It was very... The bitch don't usually act like that, Tiffany. The bitch is on drugs. Right. That sounds like (laughs) how it probably sounded. (laughs) That took me clear down deep into my soul. It really, the thought of Beyonce being like, girl, don't even trip. She's not even drunk. The bitch is She's just high, drugs. girl. <laughs> She's not like that all the time. I have met this bitch millions of times. She usually not like this. I love that. So she done sent the whole internet into a frenzy trying to figure out what the fuck she's talking about. Yeah. Who the fuck bit Beyonce? Hashtag who bit Beyonce. It's really a hashtag. It's still happening. It's all over all these different websites. Like, everybody is talking. It's like a legit news story at this Donald point. Donald Glover included it in a script that he I leaked that. for the Deadpool animated <laughs> series that they're not doing with FX anymore. I saw that. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Like, Beyonce is really the celebrity celebrity. Abs- These niggas never, what a word. ever, ever comment on anything that has anything to do with other celebrities until it's Beyonce. And then everybody from Chrissy Teigen on down is just like, bitch, who did it? I want names. <laughs> I want photos and I want proof. Like, everybody cares. Everybody is invested. To the point where niggas are getting on Twitter to be like, it wasn't me. Like, Sanaa Lathan had to be mm-hmm. like, no, wasn't I didn't me. do it. Lena Dunham said, even though it sounds like something I would it do. It does. It does, girl. You're right. Way to be self-aware. It does sound like something you or Amy Schumer or Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. It sounds like something one of you hoes would do. It really does. I also heard Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> I don't know if she decided to confirm or deny. I don't think it was Gwyneth Paltrow. Just because um, they've been friends for years. <clears throat> but they're not friends anymore. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that's what I heard. Well, I didn't know they fell out. I heard that they stopped being friends at some point. Mm. Because, you know, they were fr- I think they were friends through um, Chris, Chris Martin. Martin. Oh, well. And Chris Martin and Homegirl are not together anymore, I don't yeah, think. They consciously uncoupled. <laughs> that's what she called it on her bougie white woman website. That's right. A conscious uncoupling. <laughs> white people girl you got a divorce I just don't fuck with him <laughs> that's enough um so I mean mm. here's the thing what are we supposed to do with this uh obsess over who it might be cause we already know Beyonce's people are not going to have a comment they're not going to talk about it it didn't happen they're not going to say who did it and she already <laughs> screamed <laughs> Tiffany on top of <laughs> Right, and I feel like when the song came out, Beyonce, Beyonce, I feel like Tiffany was like, okay, well, just to be fully honest with you, I did three other interviews Here where some details more. are going to come out. Just, I'm so sorry, Beyonce. Throughout the year, it might happen Because if you notice, Tiffany has not responded to this publicly in a way that she probably would have before that song come out. She's mm-hmm. just been very much like, y'all going to say, she knew this was coming. She knew she said it in the interview. So I'm <laughs> sure she was just waiting on the day that everything came out so that she could be prepared to ignore y'all driving her crazy with wanting to know who did it. Well, here's what she said on Instagram. Okay. She had GQ. 
side note with like 8 million B emojis. She said, y'all forgot I am in the hive too. And just know this, I will always speak my truth. That's not going to stop. The queen bee kept me from doing something half of you bees would have done no matter what. You're right. That's kind of true. To me, she is a shero and a great person. I have learned so much from her in just a short amount of time. So no matter what, she has a unicorn that has her back. I love that. Someone else asked, or no, someone tweeted media takeout as saying it was Taraji, and she said, no, it wasn't. Taraji? Why the fuck with Taraji? Okay, it's not Taraji. Like, who? <laughs> <laughs> the rest of these girls, maybe. Christine. But not Taraji. Chrissy Teigen, of course, jumped in um, and said, I cannot leave this planet without knowing who bit Beyonce in the face. <laughs> I can only think of one person so who would dramatic. do this, but I cannot say. But she is the worst. Deep down, you know. Then later, she said... I feel said, like that's Jennifer Lawrence. I feel like she was talking about Lena Dunham. And then Lena Dunham said it wasn't her. I, the Lena, Amy, Jennifer thing. They're like one white woman to me. The three of them. They're just that white girl. <laughs> then Chrissy Seagan came and said, my initial guess was wrong. The real person, I never would have guessed. I've said too much. Mm. I'm never telling. I'm scared. I've said too much. Knowledge is a curse. You know how much shit I have said and done to famous people. I had to verify with John. It wasn't me. So that makes me wonder if it's not like somebody like Rashida Jones or something crazy. Somebody that nobody would ever think. That normally isn't like that. Right. But they're on drugs. Who just secretly has a coke problem. <laughs> so Biesa was like, don't be her ass. I just saw her do a line. It's fine. <sighs> Maybe. I don't know. There's so many actresses. Yeah, there's I don't so know. many. And she could have just said actress as a code word for famous woman. It doesn't even That's true too. have to be an That's actress. That's true. Too. So I don't think there's any way of knowing. That's what I'm saying. Like, I can't even, I'm not even going to sit here and like go crazy trying to figure out who it was who did this, mm -hmm. but I'm never going to figure it right. out. You know what I'm saying? And Beyonce's not going to say anything. And Tiffany Haddish at this point knows not to say shit yeah. else, I would hope. And whoever I know, did it is definitely not going to say nothing. I know she got a voicemail from an anonymous. But the phone, <laughs> the phone said no caller ID, and there was Blue's voice oh, that said, no. "Sweetie, you know, I've heard great things about you. Um, I heard that you Girls Trip money. was great. Good times. I wasn't allowed to watch it. My mama saw it, said no, and um, you know, Rumi taught her how Amazon Prime and all that other stuff work. Like, you've been here a couple months, and you're like, we're already came out your damn business. So I just have not seen the film. Her good thing is about it. Congratulations on your unicorn foolishness. But, sweetheart. I'm going to have to chill. I have been making these dollars long before you and your girls took a trip. And I'm here to let you know <laughs> that this is going to be the last time that you discuss anything going on. In the dynasty. All right? Don't it let is. me have to let the goons out on you. The Paw Patrol out on you. Get hands put on you. Not my nigga Chase. <laughs> don't do it. I don't know if you're trying to, like, spin this off into some other show. The the tea in, with Tiffany. Or I put the tea in tea. I don't know what it is that you're trying Lord. to do. You don't say anything else. We graciously allowed you to touch the hem of our garments. Don't let us take it back. I like that Blue Ivy does not introduce herself on voicemail. She just knows that you will know who she is. Hey, girl. So soon as you hear her voice. Here's the issue. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, I think Tiffany, you know, has been caught up in the, I'm um, um, experiencing a lot of yes. fame and I'm seeing a lot of crazy shit with people that I've, whose faces and names I know. And so she's acting probably like how most of us would act if you saw something crazy like a bitch biting Beyonce. <laughs> she's running her mouth about it. But celebrities really don't do that they witness other celebrities doing insanity and all fair, the time I would it would be such a daily struggle for me to not do that too <laughs> not just because like I definitely would have never said anything about somebody coming up to and flirting with Jay-Z but somebody biting my queen in the face mm -hmm. I would have been dying I would have been say, like I'll beat her ass for do you do you know <laughs> the gall <laughs> Like, there is a person alive mm. who actually had the nerve to place both their upper and lower right. jaw on this Beyonce's, Beyonce's face. whole face. Oh, it just doesn't make sense. Who would do something like that? I try to think of, like, any... Uh, 
actresses that may have died mysteriously in the past couple of weeks or whatever, like, or just went missing. Up. But Whoever no one that I can shook, think that would be so that. close to Beyonce or that just does drugs. It's just ridiculous. Like, you took your regular pedestrian plebeian ass jaws and really put your teeth on Beyonce's face like I'm having such a hard time grasping why you would do something like that it has to be a drug that takes you out of your mind to where you're performing in in a realm that just doesn't make sense anymore because there's no other reason to do that but I feel like whoever it is has to be just so scared right now that the rest of us are going to find out because it's not going to be good for you if the rest of us... I, I know Chrissy right. Teigen knows because you know her husband is John Legend, so they, they can get the real answers to these things. But if the rest of us find out, girl... Actually, I know one of y'all knows the answer. I know one of y'all knows the answer. I don't... You know, I have no reason to tell anybody. I mean, ask the read at gmail.com if I mean, you know for a fact. I have no reason to tell anyone. I don't want that kind of pressure. I don't want any Parkwood smoke. But what I do <laughs> want to know is who movie I'm not going to see no more. <laughs> right. I just want to know. I just need to know whose show old. I'm not watching, whose Netflix shit I'm not clicking on, whose movies I'm not going to, whose music I'm not downloading. I just need to know... Who it was who felt like she could put her nasty, regular person How? teeth on Damn. Beyonce's face. I just don't get that. It just, it still doesn't make sense. When I first read the story, I was like, this has to, what? You put your mouth on Beyonce? No. The answer is no. It's just a no. Hello, everybody. Wagwan. My name is Adonis. <laughs> Arbig. <laughs> Adonis Arthur Graham. <laughs> Good fucking night. Me <laughs> just want to come chat with you and make you know say, you know, me daddy I take care of me and me I eat enough ox tail and breadfruit. All right. <laughs> you are a fucking fool for that. No matter what you are. Not this baby Jamaican accent. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know what I just. I why is Adonis' Jamaican accent better than because Drake's? Because why wouldn't Adonis? Adonis has to be from like Mo Bay or like. Okay. He's off the coast. All right. Sure. I don't, I don't know where that is, but I'm so mad at you right now. Same Dash had a quick conversation with Lee Daniels the other day uh, during a Diana Ross concert. This was. So and all I heard was so good. <laughs> Yes, your your Wild West um, theme music. So I didn't realize this, or maybe I had just forgotten, but Dame Dash had uh, sued Lou, Dan- Lou Daniels, Lee Daniels, some years ago. Uh, for like twenty five million, saying that he invested all of this money in Lee Daniels' career and got nothing in return for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was twenty fourteen, maybe. So I don't know if that was like Empire getting super lit or if that was no. It was. I'm trying to think of what it was that he. He was initially mad in. about Precious, but he didn't. That's not what he invested in. It was that no. other movie. Oh, no, well, the, you're talking about the Richard Pryor movie? No, oh, it was girl. that one with the white man. The. Yes. Ugh, what is it called? I didn't butler? see it. No, not the butler. This. The... Was it? No. Was All it right. Shadow Boxer? No. Mm. I don't remember. Um, either, either way. way right. Yeah, this nigga $2 billion. Dollars. The Woodsman. That's what it was. Never that movie it. with Kevin Bacon and Kira Sedgwick. Yeah, I didn't see it either because it was a little. It, the trailer looked creepy. Um, so he says that he gave Lee Daniels two million dollars that he was supposed to get uh, credit for. I think like production credit for a lot of Lee Daniels stuff. I think including Precious. Mm-hmm. Um, he basically never got his money back, never got anything for anything, and has been searching for his money and trying to run down this nigga for his money ever since, I suppose. Um, I don't know if you went down to, like, B&H Photo and grabbed a camera real quick <laughs> and then ran up on, because it's, like, very, like, someone here is recording this with the intention of Dame Dash getting it and 100%. posting it. 100%. Um, 
and great video quality. I don't know <laughs> if this is just an iPhone because iPhones can surprise you these days. Um, but like depth of field, everything is just it's there. Right. Um, and in the video, you can see him pressing Lee Daniels. Lee Daniels is sort of standing there like when. When you're younger and your mama is about to whoop your ass and you can't really do nothing but stand there and mm-hmm. brace yourself for it. Like, didn't I tell you if you came back in here with some D's that I was going to tear? Your, what did I say? What What did I say? You knew all day you was going to get that whooping. And you just be looking at like a spot on the ground and you don't make eye contact. <laughs> and it's like, you said that she was going to beat the black off. <laughs> I said I was going to beat the black off of your ass if you did. So that means I should do Get what? switch. Now that you done came in my house with all these Ds. What do that mean I should do? So you think that I'm stupid and you just have to like wait oh, for the ass This is bringing back too to many memories. Like that's how he's just kind of looking like. You must think I'm somebody to play with. No, I'm not one of your little friends. Uh, I will give you my number and we'll talk. <laughs> Why don't he like, already have your number? See, this is what I understand. You owe this nigga millions, millions you out here like flexing and prospering and best friends with Oprah and got all these TV shows and shit and my millions is just where are my millions at? Here's what this caption says from Dame Dash. I straight up loan this dude Lee, Lee Daniels two million to pay for his dream of being a director. It was money I used to fund my movies and stay indie. Mm. I don't know why he spelled indie like that, but he promised. I get my money back in months. Then he makes Precious and goes missing so he doesn't have to pay me. Then the butler. Empire. Same shit. Why does this dude feel like he doesn't have to pay me? Why do I have to look crazy to get my money back or go to court? That's so real. Ask him why he doesn't feel like he has to pay me even though he has it. What type of shit is this? Pay what you owe. I'm going to put this whole thing on my IGTV in a few. Shout out to him for understanding IGTV because I don't get it. Right? I clicked on it once and clicked right back out. Immediately out. Oh, no, girl. What is this? Clearly not YouTube on Instagram? No, No, thank thank you. you. I'm all right. Mm -mm, No. True definition of a culture vulture. What? What? No, I don't think that's it. But he's a nigga no, just like it's, you. He's, do, he's doing his culture. That's not... I don't think culture vulture. He's a money vulture. He took yours. <laughs> <laughs> and you want it back. And all of that is understandable. Like, I was with him until that yeah. sentence. Eats off the culture, but robs the culture at the same time. Again, wrong. <laughs> see you back in... See you back in court, Lee. You're going to pay me what you owe me. <laughs> Please, everyone, ask him way he doesn't think he has to pay me. And then I love this. At everybody from TMZ to Van Lathan to Page Six to Shade Room, oh, Halle God, Berry, Oprah, <laughs> World Star, World to see World Star added next to Vogue magazine is God. insane. Dame was like, "Look, I'm tired. Who all can I put in this caption? Because I'm fed the fuck up." He told him in the video as well that a lawsuit was coming, and just a few short hours later. It was all over. Here it is on the New York Daily News. Mm-hmm. Dame Dash sues Lee Daniels for $5 million breach of contract over Damn. Richard Pryor biopic. So there is a contract. Because I was about to say, maybe the only thing that's saving Lee Daniels' ass is, is it? that it was some nigga shit, you know, shaking hands and, you know, verbal agreements. And so he could easily just be like, oh, you gave me that money. Like, I never agreed to pay you back. It was never a loan. But if there's a contract signed that specifies that he's going to get his money back with some or such rate of interest or anything else then absolutely gone and sue but I love that he was like why do I have to do that why do I have to take you to court That's when you true. know you have my money I should not have to do that That's like when somebody borrows something from you and they know good and damn well they have it and they just won't never give it back you're like why There's do I have to chase like behind you to get my shit there's a lot of people like that. And he said himself, Lee, in the video, I know I'm wrong. I'm mm-hmm. going to get to your money. So it wasn't even like, <laughs> right. it wasn't even like I could say, okay, well, Lee, what's your side of the story? Because <laughs> I have video I have in front it. of my face right. of you telling this nigga, A, I'm going to give you your money, and B, I know that I am wrong. Right. And not much else of anything. <laughs> so, like, right. And meanwhile, Lee was Diana. Like he just wanted it to calm down. Just, like, please, let's not do this let's right not do this. now. And Diana is up on the stage talking about her grandbabies <laughs> yeah. and her ankle <laughs> hurt her ankle and shit and I feel like it's about to rain or whatever <laughs> just such a ridiculous thing Lee Daniels know he need to run that nigga his money and quit playing if you have it girl you know what I'm saying like, I don't why? like to owe nobody nothing millions speak 
Facts. I don't want nobody saying Crystal did such and such and I ain't, I ain't never seen my shit again. I ain't never get that back. No, bitch. You got, first of all, that's why I don't ask for nothing from right. nobody. But if I had to, I'll be damned if I'm going to just be out here prospering in your face and never giving you your money. I don't care if it's $30. I know you out here looking for it. And I have had to press you about my shit before. <laughs> I like knowing that I don't owe nobody nothing. Yes, like, me too. Take this money so I know I don't have to give it I to you. I paid off the rest of my student loans. Now the only nigga I owe is the IRS. Oh, God damn. And I just feel like I'm probably always gonna. Well, that's about it for it, Black that is actually this not week. It. We're gonna wrap so, that up actually, and then we're, we're gonna super, head on over to the next segment where we talk about pop culture and stories. Are you done? Because I have to do it. Okay. This week in Black Excellence. Oh, wow. My nigga Kid Fury. Are you playing the fucking Jamaican? The legendary podcaster, vlogger, and stand up comedian Kid Fury. It was announced this week. Is developing a half hour HBO <laughs> comedy <sorry>. series. <laughs> what is this playing in the It's background? the Jamaican National Anthem. Are you? I thought you would love it. <laughs> okay, first of all, Thanks Clarence. Thanks for wave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will stop. <laughs> I was trying to think of how Jamaican I could make it, but wow! thanks to Lena Waithe and a handful of other amazing people. Kid Fury, my motherfucking nigga sitting right across from me right oh, now, gosh. will serve as writer and co-executive producer on the oh, new series. It is a sur- surreal, God. dark comedy that follows Greg. No. We're not a 20-something doing this. sarcastic gay black man oh, navigating adulthood God. and responsibility in New York City. You are so much. While struggling with his undiagnosed clinical depression. Uh, I just have to say, I s- obviously saw this coming, but I, <laughs> I mean, I simply did. Um, but all of us who have been Kid Fury fans for so long and can remember your ass back in Florida in your mama's house taping videos yeah. in your room. Yes. Those of us who remember the salmon colored wall. Those of us who have watched you move to New York and deal with loud ass toddlers mm. and rats and yeah, mental health shit. Some that people know about and some that don't and just all the trials and all the things you have overcome and getting past your own self to be where you are right now, my nigga. I am so proud of you. Thank you. I am so proud of you because I know what it took mm. for you to get here and we don't ever celebrate ourselves. But I am going to force you to celebrate yourself today, (laughs) bitch, because you did that. No, nigga. You don't get to downplay it. You don't get to act like it's not that big of a deal. I'm pretty sure you're the first openly gay Jamaican American person to have a TV show. I'm pretty sure. Not even ordered yet. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, my nigga. I'm just saying. Let us be happy for you. Let us be proud of you because it is such an amazing thing you have done. And we I just cannot say enough good things. I'm so Thank proud. You. Look at my motherfucking friend. <laughs> oh my God. Out there living his truth. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. I'm not even going to get in my emotions, but. No, it's yes. okay. You can. No, Do you I have won't. a speech? Would you like to tell the people I don't your have story? A Would I you don't. like to tell them about your process? All I am going to say about this is that I am incredibly grateful. I have been pouring the majority of myself into this project Facts. into this experience for Facts. such a long time and it has drained so much <laughs> energy from me <laughs> not because the process is draining i mean it's hard work but it means so much to me that i have so much I have placed a lot of pressure on myself and I think that it has affected me in my life in many, many ways ever since. But the ball has been moving. Thank you to Lena Waif. Thank you so much to Chloe and Jason and HBO and everybody for being so supportive and so helpful and understanding that, you know, I'm a lunatic and I'm also humble to a fault sometimes. So, yeah, I'm just... You know, it's still really, really early. My nigga, I cannot tell you how many headshots I've gotten in the past two days. Like, <laughs> so bet. when does shooting start? I'm ready to go. And I'm like, girl, <laughs> you, it's so early. I, when that press release came out, I was like, 
excited because it's not a secret anymore or whatever but at the same time it's still so early on yeah. that it's like i don't know that i'm ready for all of this attention on it yet. yeah i'm still like cradling cradling it in my mammy titties and my bosom i definitely thought they were gonna sit on it for a couple more weeks before it came out and i was just like damn they wasted no time like they were literally just waiting to be like yep got everything great put it out there like said variety my whole government yeah variety was <laughs> variety put it all out there and middle initial and all. now everybody <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and now everybody is celebrating you. So many people who do not see themselves reflected in TV are going to see characters that look like them and their friends and their brothers and their cousins. And it is just such a great thing. I am so, so proud of you. I love you so much. Thanks. All I love ask is that if my character makes an appearance, please don't cast a mixed girl <laughs> to play me. That's all I ask. <laughs> No, I'm just saying. Please don't let them do that. See, this to is me. the problem now. <laughs> Motherfuckers think that this is gonna be like a story about my life and everybody I'm in just my saying life. If. And it's not. I'm saying if. Okay. If I show up, cast <laughs> cast this, somebody with two black parents. I'm not gonna talk about <laughs> That's too all much I of it. ask. What I will say though is that this for me, it is more important about telling a story of emotion and like self discovery than like telling you about kid fury or yes. how like it's not about that at all it's about like feelings and emotion and misunderstanding yourself not giving yourself enough credit or a break and that sort of thing and then how all Great. of that fits under the queer black mm. lens this is going to be beautiful so i cannot wait to see it just keep that in mind prayers up say a good one for me I thanks so much a gift for you you are just is that hennessy white it is what is today and it is infused with marijuana oh my god <laughs> i know you have somewhere to be tonight so i don't expect you to drink right now but you know, what if there's a young you man that you, <laughs> right I had all this planned out. What you mean, nigga? It's a celebration. You have done something amazing, my nigga. This is so ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, there I will take your, it. Okay, you're gonna get you this episode pulled. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! All right. So moving oh, along. Oh, Sante got you this. Oh what? my god! It's the spicy Haribos. <laughs> so you know what what i will say is get you some friends like these because You're if welcome, you are my nigga. anything like me and you are not giving yourself credit at all you need somebody to do it oh please we're actually not ever going to let you live this down i just want you to know this okay. is just the beginning of your embarrassment remind me how the emmys were I uh, need to know you'll find out yourself day. my nigga mm, yeah, <laughs> why don't okay. you tell me next year how the emmys are that's all why hypothetical don't you do that? let's talk about somebody who's been okay, there okay great okay, okay great right anyway though so what's your favorite book wow Last week, um, we discussed whether or not Nicki Minaj should be on the sick and shut in list. Mm -hmm. I felt like the answer was no at the time. I definitely thought it was yes. You did. <laughs> I just want to say that. <laughs> you did. It was time then, and it's time now. I believe that Nicki Minaj is high. Surrounded by yes people facts. and ignoring the no people. Big facts. All around. All of these things, mm -hmm. I believe to be true. Me too. Woo. If you've ever had like a pet or if you have kids that, that just, you come home and the whole house is a mess and then you have to like figure out where you start to clean right. like how do you where do I address this first? Do you start with Harriet Tubman? Is it the shit covered walls? <laughs> Of the toys everywhere. You start with the baby. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. Um, Nicki Minaj got on Twitter after her album came out um, and placed number two on the Billboard charts. Second to Travis Scott's new album Astro World, which is number one for the second week in a row. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm just I'm so tired. It is exhausting to get through this. Nikki retweeted a screenshot of Stormy's mother 
who posted <sighs> promotion of Travis's upcoming tour, Astro World, the Astro World tour. Here's what Nikki says, and I'm going to read everything. You should <laughs> think it's a good idea. <laughs> Travis sold over 50,000 of these. Uh, White girls? <laughs> <laughs> these are tour passes, merch. Got it, got so it, got so it, forth. got it. With no requirement of redeeming the album, with no dates for a tour, etc. I spoke to him. He knows he doesn't have the number one album this week. <laughs> I love my fans for the number one album in America. I'll explain on hashtag Queen Radio. Four albums in number one in 86 countries <sighs> okay my first album sold 400,000 no one is doing that with debut albums now so I'm so grateful I lost out on 12 hours of sales and did 200,000 in one week after I was supposedly cancelled I bit my tongue last week Queen Radio but I won't on Tuesday I love you guys so much <laughs> I looked at the numbers, the Carters, Kanye, Nas, etc. recently did. Travis sold 200,000 in his first week of clothes alone. Okay. I spoke to him last night and he said he's been selling clothes before the music. Billboard says they'll change the rules because of this. <gasps> so it should be changed now. I put my blood, sweat, and tears in writing a dope album only for Travis Scott to have Kylie Jenner post a tour pass telling people to come see her and stormy. LOL. I'm actually laughing. Queen broke the record of being number one in 86 countries. Thank Jesus and thank you to my fans. Queen Radio on Tuesday. Spotify put Drake's face on every playlist, but they told me they had to teach me a lesson for playing my music 10 minutes early on Queen Radio, even though they've been giving away my music for free for years. And I'm one of the top Spotify artists of all time. Spotify had to teach me a lesson, but rewarded the man who has had an Apple radio show the longest, inadvertently helping the Apple platform the most. Oh, I can't wait for Queen Radio on Tuesday. They took away my promotion they had promised for the first couple days because of this. Hashtag Queen. My music went up on Apple, so I played it. I assumed it was on Spotify and Tidal at the time. At the same time, Spotify said that Apple tweeted fans advising Queen was up and therefore they had to teach me a lesson. But praise be to God. <coughs> a fan retweeted, this shit is crazy. I can't believe she's been going through this. Nikki says, my label didn't want to defend me for fear of Spotify trying to teach Ariana a lesson too. Do you know how many people subscribe to my Spotify page? <coughs> Do you know how many women get systematically blackballed <laughs> out of their positions in an office building and can't fight back? people are all calling me thinking I'm huffing and puffing OMG y'all this is sarcasm dry humor yikes I'm having the most iconic time get it iconic no, I get it I like, get it yeah I get it like me come let me kiss you Who's coming to the secret show? When people call me and hear me cracking up laughing, they seem so puzzled. Loosen up! Now here is where... <laughs> I'm where so upset. Getting I'm bizarre. very upset with you. <laughs> you have been cutting up. All the queens I remember shook shit up! Queen of the week may go to Harriet Tubman. <laughs> Has she just sat there and ate her rice? You niggas' history would have been a less triumphant. Would have been a lot less triumphant. <laughs> ate her rice. My nigga, her rice. <laughs> like, her I rice. laughed for the remainder of the day over the rice. The, the rice. The thought of 
out your tub and being like, I could lead these niggas to freedom, but let me just go just, fix this just, this men and rice right I'm quick. I don't have time for this bitch. <laughs> let me get some butter. I ain't got time for these niggas. What? Nicholas, what? <laughs> What is wrong with her? Now, first of all, you know that Harriet was on them neck bones. <laughs> like, that's, that's like... True. Rice? True. Her gravy? Nigga, please. Bitch! Don't even like, come around here talking about your mama gravy when Harriet Tubman is in the kitchen. Y'all, I had no idea Harriet Tubman was now trending. I said what I said. <laughs> Queen Radio will honor her tomorrow. She said she could have rescued more slaves had they known they were slaves. I fought for streaming services to count toward Billboard when a lot of niggas stayed quiet. <sighs> she was seen during the VMAs, um, stopped by paparazzi. They asked her about the Harriet Tubman. She called herself the new Harriet Tubman. <sighs> Twice. Okay. Um... Since then, she has uh, got on Queen Radio, which I believe happened today. Okay. I think maybe it was this morning. I don't remember. Hmm. Um, where I... lots of fun things happened, like this. The Queen Radio thing was Tuesday. And I'm going to be using my own sound effects. Now, can you please tell me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoa! Um, so it was her um handing out uh make believe awards, including an award called the Ho Nigga of the Week, which she gave to Travis Scott right. for uh selling merch and concert or tour passes, which at the time the tour had not been announced, it's since has been, but and has started. Yes, so unlike um, somebody else's, which we'll get to, get to get, I'm sure. Mm, yep. Yes, I'm sure about that. Um, but she's upset because she feels though that um, it isn't fair for merchandise and tours, tickets, and things like that to count towards album sales. Um, so she called them all kinds of um, niggas and hoes and bitches and whatnot. Okay. Um, for convincing people that he's been selling albums when he's selling clothes. Um, sidebar, I'm sure that he's selling both quite well. I was going to say, I don't understand why she think it. Why would Billboard count merchandise sales as album sales unless an album was also sold? I mean, that's the thing. You can buy like a hoodie and it comes with the album. She's doing this as well. I, I was going to say, so what's the problem? I guess they're saying that I heard the Barbs were were saying that she, it wasn't counted towards her album, but it was counted towards his. Like the week prior, or like like right before oh. her album came out, they changed it or something. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what all this inequality shit is about. I don't. <laughs> the fact that she's this mad over getting the number two album is really all you need to oh, know. Oh, but sis, she isn't mad. Oh, oh, she's mad. Well, the parts from this interview that really went viral was towards the end of it, where whew, Cat Williams roasted Wanda Smith's ass up like Publix chicken. <laughs> like, oh man, this now. If you watch, this like, went way too far. The clip that I initially saw. On Twitter, which was like, you know, the two minutes and 20 seconds or whatever that Twitter gives Oh, me. I didn't think I watched anything that long. No, there was like, well, the first thing that I saw from this interview uh -huh. when I heard about it was yeah. the clip of him and Wanda at Me the too. End. So that was like two minutes long. Okay, yeah, I didn't see nothing that long. I must have watched a shorter version. After I watched that, I was like, I need to see <laughs> everything that happened in that room. And I went back and watched the full interview and it gave me a little bit more insight because again, he did walk in with his dick on the table, yes, like did. that attitude. Mm -hmm. And at first I was like, well, Wanda can't be mad at nobody's Cat Williams because she made, you know, a joke about him needing to go to the salon and get his hair done. And he looked at the camera <laughs> and then looked back like, does she know? 
Does she look at her fire ass up? And that's exactly uh, that's what, he what, did. what he did. Yeah. He said, my hair is, what he said, 19 inches with no perm or nine inches? Uh, well, I, don't remember I, that, I, I thought he said 19, but like, either way, that was a lie. You don't have no 19 inches. Well, he said, nigga. come run one of your gnarled fingers through it. And so that's what I knew. Do they have to be gnarled? Well. You may find her jewelry, her blood pressure, her clothes. That shake and go wig. That wig. He asked if the wig and the headphones came together as he said. <laughs> That's something else fucked up. Up. Her co hosts laughed harder than we are. So True. I just feel like. You I mean, know, and comedians do this. So. Right. <laughs> this is not. This is not uncommon. When well, I watch the full interview, though. Maybe. Maybe a little. When I watched the full interview, I felt like. He was there was this weird tension with between them the whole way. Okay. And it seemed like both of them was trying to joke their way past it. But earlier in the interview before it got there, she asked him something like, because he's a single father of like seven, eight kids or something. And she asked him, like, do you cook for them? And like, what are some of the things you cook? And for what some reason it just seemed like he was annoyed with her. Mm. It didn't seem like she was trying him in that moment or before that, yeah. honest with you. It just seemed like he didn't care for how she was reacting to some things. Um, Maybe he felt attacked because he don't cook for his kids. Well, he said not only that he cooks, but some of the kids have, you know, different choices. It sounds like one of the children might be vegan. One oh. of them does not do dairy. Okay. So he makes, you know lasagna regular lasagna for some of the kids and then a vegetarian oh, okay. one well, shut me the fuck up. and he says he makes chicken wings for everyone because niggas <laughs> and lasagna and chicken wings that isn't that is a nigga meal. and salad and bread niggas really believe any italian main can be a side <laughs> niggas will put anything on the side <laughs> That is so true. We really will we put really literally will. anything Your on the whole side. pasta dish. I will die. <laughs> the first time I ever went to North Carolina and I went to cookout and I like walked up to the menu and realized you could get like like a hot dog or <laughs> something as a side, like yes. side chicken sandwich with fries. Like what? That's a combo. <laughs> That's- like what? That's not a side. <laughs> That's um, the main. That's the whole thing. Right. That's an entree. <laughs> um yeah, it just seemed like he wasn't all the way feeling her. He said something to her earlier in in that about like, oh, just because you're not, a, just because you're a poor interviewer, don't mean like, oh damn. And it was like jokes, but you not know, you really saw jokes, it. Right. Right, right? So I feel like by the time it got to that got uh, gnarled you. finger, he was, they he were was, over one yeah, another. Got it. Which is why she made that salon comment, and it went back and forth. And I back just and don't forth. know why you would say anything about anybody's hair when yours looks like that. Like you really asked for it. You sis. just Jesus. Ooh, that's just something you didn't. She called did. his clothes old, and of course he knew exactly. <laughs> where that label was of to show you. <laughs> oh, where, girl? Oh, who? <sighs> she just set herself up. She for really did. She, she did. really did. But now that niggas are pulling guns. <laughs> so, Red Grant was headlining a show um, at a comedy club in Atlanta. Wanda was um, one of the opening acts, I guess, or she was opening for him. She was there with her husband. And oh, yeah. the story originally started out that. Cat Williams was at the comedy show and that, like, Wanda's husband ran down on this nigga and pulled a gun out on him for what he said. And I was ready to come in here and read Wanda. To be honest, I was going to read both of them. Mm -hmm. But I was going to be like, Wanda, now you know damn well. Like, you're a comedian. You've been telling jokes for years and years and years and years. Like, (laughs) you lost that roast. It was, you know what I'm saying? But that's just, it is what it is. Right. Um... She went back on the air and said that the same story that her husband told, which was that she was standing outside with her husband. Cat Williams was approaching the comedy club, saw her, made a beeline to her and said, I told you fucking with me would make your ass viral. And that her husband basically said, go on with that shit. <laughs> and that he like threatened to fight the husband. Oh, well, <laughs> see. And that the husband like raised his <laughs> shirt, his shirt to, to know. show that he had a gun on right. his face and that's when Cap got to running. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see, now, I like that story a lot that, better. That, I prefer that one. <laughs> because it does seem unrealistic that she would send her man after Cat Williams with a gun behind that. That seems like 
not a realistic or um I guess just not a reaction that makes any sense. Like it's not. I mean, that I can see serious. niggas doing it, but yes, it's not that. It's serious. It's not that serious, and right. especially you being rational. a comic, right? You know, like if she, if you had yes. gone off on like Angela, I'd be like, now why the fuck did you do that right. to Angela? Like, <laughs> right. Let what me is your problem? Now she find a nigga to come and fight you. <laughs> but why does a comedian? That's what they do, right? And she pokes for people all the time. So that's it what he gets for talking me. about fighting somebody. Now, see. Now he says that I read on AJC that Oh, this is on AJC? <laughs> his um statement, the husband, oh Lamora Sellers. Wow. He said the cat stepped to him to fight him and he was like, Well, let's get it. Essentially, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. Right. Um Lamora stands at six foot two, three hundred and seventy whole pounds. Oh my god. And so Cat decided to then <laughs> run. <laughs> Why would Cat step to that man in the first place? He got a whole fucking foot on you. Mr. Self. <laughs> and at an least entire, 200 pounds. <laughs> like, Jesus. <laughs> he says that he pursued Mr. Williams and that Cat's bodyguard got involved. I bet. The bodyguard, he and the bodyguard start to tussle and he fell over and his gun fell out oh. after he fell over. He said he's carried a gun for 10 years. He's licensed to do so and that he didn't have a holster on him. Sometimes he didn't remember that his gun is on him, which I oh always find so hard to believe. But even Plies just got arrested for having a gun at the airport or some I shit like that. I think do forget so they he, have the like, gun on them. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so far outside of my world that I just cannot comprehend. That is crazy. Bitch, if I had a gun on me, it would be the number one thought on my mind until it was no longer on me. Sometimes I'd be having like maybe $5 in my bag and I'm like, oh, I forgot that I had some cash in here. You know what I'm saying? But a gun? No. I've never, ever. Anyhow, he says that he got a put his gun back on his waist, chased Cat Williams into the grocery store, and that cat was running through the aisles. And that at that point, uh, Mr. Sellers noticed... <laughs> I'm just reading this. He noticed that people were staring at that point. He yeah. didn't want to cause a commotion. <laughs> he says he even went pa- back past the bodyguard and was like, look, I ain't got nothing against you. Um, and he could tell by the bodyguard's face and demeanor that he wasn't even interested. Mm-hmm. He said, he told the nigga, like, he's not even paying you enough for this. <laughs> so, like, it's not worth it. They squashed it's that. Not worth it, right? And he went back to his wife. So, that story sounds like it makes way more sense it to is. me. I could absolutely see Kat bumping in her and being and saying what he said. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why he would want to fight the husband for telling him to go on about his business. I don't know why he would say that in front of the husband. Like, you had, that's her husband. He is going to defend and protect her. Are you? Your mind. And he's basically your Goliath. Right. There was so he had to, this is what I'm saying. Substances are involved. Because <laughs> nobody in their rational, sober mind would have done that with that man standing right there. It just doesn't it defies all logic. A junior varsity oh. basketball child beat your ass <laughs> in the park. Like So this man would have stomped a mud hole in your ass. I'm just why And you knew it. it. That's why you took off running in the Kroger. Imagine sitting in Kroger, just picking out your baby's breakfast cereal. And here come Cat Williams' little short Bitch. ass <laughs> running into your cart. <laughs> well, officer, I just had the Apple Jacks in my hand. And then, you know, the next thing I knew, here he came. And I recognized him from, the, you know, he was that alligator man. And so, like, what? Oh, what and a when mess. he saw Tiffany Haddish at the Emmys, he, like, got down on his knees. They took a picture together. She was smiling, looking like Diana Ross and Mahogany with that dress on. I love her. And had her Emmy in hand, not giving a fuck about whatever the fuck it was that he was saying because she has, like, eight more movies that come out before the end of right. the year. Like, wh- how can you give a shit? You right. know what I'm saying? Um, so I don't even understand. Like, why not just go up to Wanda and be like, hey, girl, we went viral. You know, it was all love. Give her a hug and go about your business. Like, right. why be nasty? That's why I feel like he definitely does have a chip on his shoulder. He does. And the fact that you just won an Emmy and people are like clapping for you and embracing you, like just but enjoy But instead that. of being like, okay, I'm getting recognized for my talent. You're taking it as, it's about goddamn time yeah. y'all started recognizing me for my y'all talent. I'm Cat Williams, bitch. And don't forget it. And this is why everybody else getting booked is trash. And I'm not like, or you could just be happy that you won a fucking Emmy and that people do know. I mean, Honestly, I don't understand why anybody who is wealthy complains about too much. About most of these things. Most things. 
Keep that, me away from it, Jesus. Okay? Most things that annoy you or get on your nerves, you should be able to tell yourself, I have enough money to walk away from this and not deal with it anymore. You just, and that's just what I'm going to do. On this radio station, bragging about how you got paid two something million dollars. Two million for a show for that a, you got paid 300000 for. You just said that. Just to show it. Right. Right? So, like, it so seems you mean to, to me be, like you should be like, girl, I don't have a care You the got world. them kind of bags. It ain't nothing that could press me. So, getting an Emmy on top of that is just like... Child I would support, be maybe. <sighs> well, he's a single father. He said he making lasagna okay. for all the babies. See, he likes being a daddy. I'm confused. It don't make sense. What is wrong with Cat Williams? Let's see, Cat Williams. You need to really look at look at yourself, look at your life, and why you unhappy with it, and and investigate those reasons. Because you hating on Tiffany Haddish just don't make no sense. That's just it. it you don't it even was, have to like her stand up, but to say the things you said about her, like she don't like you, mad that you got an Emmy, and this girl who is way undeserving got an Emmy. Like she just got here, and she ain't got nothing on me, and ain't nobody got my number of specials and blah blah blah, all this shit. Like. Or you could just be happy for your own accomplishments and your own life. Right. And Even knowing you that you are. For right. You are so much. It's like Nicki Minaj. You are way deeper exactly. in this game. You are way more established. You do automatically get a bigger check. So, like, hating on the young ones for what? I don't know. It seems like maybe some of these people get. Um when you're in it sometimes, especially when you've been in it for a while and then you start to feel like people are doubting you, some people seem to take it real personal mm-hmm. and react to it. And then others seem to be like, child, I couldn't give a fuck if I tried my best. Right. But I'm just thinking, like, being in that position and then the position that you're in right now, getting this Emmy, people are super happy for you. Even if you aren't embracing your peers and stuff like that, I just don't understand why you have to, like, be nasty to black comics that are doing well and really not walking around talking nasty about people. I mean, Sanaa Lathan isn't too happy with Tiffany Haddish. But other than that, I just seem (laughs) like, you know, we're all good. I don't know. It just, you don't have to act like this. Um, and I recommend therapy, like I do to everybody yeah, in all helps. times and at every situation. Yeah. So <laughs> I think a, a qualified licensed therapist could help a lot here. Probably. Yeah. This week's episode also is supported by Blue Apron. Starting in January, Blue Apron chefs have teamed up with the health and wellness experts over at WW to design a variety of delicious recipes that make cooking for a healthy lifestyle easy. Blue Apron's new WW Freestyle plan features six chef design recipes every week. You can choose up to three recipes per week, pre-portioned ingredients, and create delicious meals for as low as four smart points each if you're a pointer. And I guess that would count a lot to you. Their partnership allows you to enjoy the deliciousness and flexibility of the WW Freestyle program without grocery shopping or meal planning, which are honestly my least favorite aspects of cooking. You can let Blue Apron handle all that. Enjoy the holidays while you get a wholesome head start on the new year with Blue Apron. It is so easy to use. Like I said, I have found ways to remix so many different dishes that I would have never thought to like cook for myself in adulthood. Thanks to Blue Apron. You can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free at blueapron.com slash the read. That's blueapron.com slash the R-E-A-D. Blue Apron is a better way to cook. Check them out and let's move on. This week's episode is also being brought to you from Calm. What if 2019 was all about slowing down and being mindful? One can only fuck it up. Imagine how many goals you would accomplish then. That's why we're excited to partner with Calm, the number one app to help you meditate, sleep, and relax. Practices like meditation and prioritizing sleep can leave you feeling more rested so you have the energy to go out and achieve your goals. If you head to calm.com slash three, you'll get 25% off of a Calm premium subscription, which includes hundreds of hours of programs like guided meditations on issues like anxiety, stress, and focus, including a brand new meditation each day called the Daily Calm. Sleep stories, which are bedtime stories for adults. Oh, I need it. Right. Designed to help you with help you relax before you doze off. Head to the Lavender Fields of France with Stephen Fry. <laughs> or explore New Zealand with Jerome Flynn from Game of Thrones. That sounds like loads of fun. Mm-hmm. For a limited time, the Reed listeners get 25% off of a Calm premium subscription at com.com slash the read. That is C-A-L-M dot com Slash the read. Get unlimited access to all of Calm's content today at com.com slash the read. Give yourself the gift of Calm and start 2019 off right. And yes. let's move on. First one comes from Sheriff. All right. And Sheriff says, I have a dilemma I hope you can help me with. I bet you do. I'm a straight man who has experienced some traumatizing events recently. Here is what happened. 
I met this girl at the club and I was fortunate enough to bring her back to the crib. Everything was fly. <laughs> Already trash. She was beautiful with dark cocoa skin, a fat ass, natural hair, and lips that taste like passion fruit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was already done from fortunate enough to bring her back to the group. <laughs> this is a nigga. Okay, go ahead. We were hot, heavy, and ready to smash when she pulled down her panties. To my discomfort, she had one of the longest clitor I've ever seen. I was surprised and confused. However, I did not want to hurt her feelings, so I played along with her confidence. I played it cool and went down on her. It was weird, but I got over it. The real problem came when she put her hand on my head and forced me to put the whole clit in my mouth and suck it. She was aggressive and in the mood, so I again played along. Most men would find this emasculating, but guess what? I liked it. All right. We finished hooking up, and that was the last I've seen of her. I bet. Side note, I cannot believe most men find that emasculating. What? <laughs> If a woman pushes your head yeah, I was into her, it's, you're doing something right. Men find everything emasculating. Oh, God. <laughs> can't nobody not, emasculate not you. Your manhood is your manhood. We can't take that away from you. Especially if you liked it. God, what? Niggas, you were eating pussy. How do you feel emasculated? <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the letter. Because <laughs> it gets much crazier. I'm sure. Since then, I've been searching for a girl like her, but I've had no luck. Oh, well, now he wants some more long clit love. Therefore, in my mind, the next logical thing to do would be to go after penis. Wait. The night with that girl left me confused uh, about my sexuality. Okay. If I liked sucking long clit so much, then I might be gay, right? Mm. Sure. What? <laughs> sure, you might. <laughs> I went and found a guy and brought him home to tickle my curiosity. Okay. All I told right. you. I went down on okay. him. I went yeah. down on him, and to my surprise, I did not like it. <laughs> we had sex, and I felt uneasy the whole time. Oh, you kept going. I guess I'm just nice, and I can't say no. But we were already in the act, and I didn't want to be rude. You're allowed to Since say Since you no. are at any point allowed Male, to say no. Male, female. Since then, I have sustained from sex for a while to ponder on my emotions. <laughs> what do you guys think? I like long clits, but penis was not my thing. Am I gay? Thanks, Sheriff. This is what the fuck y'all be asking for. <laughs> See, although, you know, a, a, like the majority of my spirit believes that this is a lie. But right. That was too far. It was a mess. <laughs> Just imagining that it could, because it could be true. So <laughs> it could be. That is. That's so, why I you know said something? six brown chicks. I thought I kind of thought that that story about homegirl who had a threesome with her man and her best friend was fake. I thought that that was fake. And we met them niggas. Oh God! What? They came to my party. You don't remember we met them? Your party? My three hundred five live party oh, last year. Oh, I think you I may have blocked been drunk. this. Yeah, I think I blocked that out. <laughs> So, oh shit! Oh wait, no! Ah, uh, this is coming they back. They came up to us, yes, and we're like, we're the ones. I mean, unless they liars too, but I don't believe. I mean, I think, that, I mean, maybe, <laughs> but so, what do we have for sheriff, <laughs> sweetie? <laughs> um, <clears throat> does liking no long clip, sheriff? But I'm drawing a blank here. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I you really thought <laughs> so <laughs> sir so you I'm just trying to figure out how you arrived to the assumption that you must be gay dick was for you because you like long clips <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense oh <laughs> <I'm dying. laughs> It doesn't. It's. It might be a long clit, but it's still. It's still resting. a clitoris. <laughs> it's still resting amidst the rest of the vagina. The rest of the vagina. So I just don't understand how having a long clit in your mouth made you think, huh? That was delicious. Maybe dick next. You know what? <laughs> Yum. I can't find any more? You know, Girl. normal clits. So, and I've had an ex with. Well, I guess it's different with lesbians. I was about to say that was not a problem in our relationship. I'm sure it wasn't. How ridiculous! You could see it from across the room. <laughs> you could see it. I was just like, yo. So you just have a dick. Like you're just gonna have a dick, and that's fine. You just are gonna. So, okay. You know, 
<laughs> All I will say to you, <sighs> Sheriff. I love it. Is that if this is, in fact, a thing that happened to you. Yeah. I will commend you for your uh, your willingness to experiment with your sexuality. Mm-hmm. And not only that. I like but, where you went with this. But to ponder on it afterwards and figure out what this means to you. Our laughter should not allow you or anyone else to think <laughs> that there is something wrong with this. You know, it is healthy and it is actually very progressive. And um, I mean, you were, you were curious and you wanted to know. Exactly. I just feel like the curiosity for man sex... <laughs> I have a hard time believing that it was simply just because I, I mean I don't I have it's still a vagina I, I don't, right long clitoris or not I mean it's above a cooch whereas the dick is above balls I just feel like if you've slept with more than like five women you have to be aware that like vaginas and all that they come in a lot of there's lots of different lots ways of they can look yeah so the the fact that an an extra long clit threw you off so much that you were like maybe I just need to deep throat some dick it's just the leap there is a lot, but I appreciate that you were like, I'm curious about it, so I'm going to try it out. But it wasn't for me. I didn't really like having dick in my mouth. I fucked this nigga, but my heart wasn't into it. So <laughs> so I think you can rest assured because his overall question was if he, he was gay? gay. The fact that you did not enjoy sex sucking dick or having sex with a man leads me to believe that you are not. Me too. I don't think you're gay. I think you just like women being sexually aggressive. And for the record, most will never admit it, but a lot of straight men have experimented with men in one capacity or the next. Maybe not full-blown sex. Mm-hmm. Maybe not oral. But lots of men right. have and will take that shit to their grave, and that's their motherfucking business. Again, you, allegedly... <laughs> were you know <laughs> right because we don't know comfortable to an extent at least to say hmm, thinking about dicks let's see what this is about uh, not for me maybe that didn't that's make cool. any sense <laughs> as a thought process because I, I just okay. don't get it like I like <laughs> I'm not judging nobody I just don't understand oh, how like apple it. plus apple equaled orange <laughs> right. I just don't it but didn't make sense but that's all right either way you landed where you did mm-hmm. and you did some thinking for yourself and I think that that is great women are permitted to do that all of the time a woman could be dating niggas for decades and meet the right stud and be all of a sudden <sighs> get in her life and be like it's for me or it's not for me or right, whatever and then right. ruin this damn stud's life but <laughs> it happens literally all the time and everybody's okay with it so you do the same thing it's not your tea maybe you need to I don't know get girls with straps or maybe there's a long clip forum <laughs> a long clip forum this should be an option on dating <laughs> profiles yeah, clit length so your clit length we're talking external view how With much like of slider. it is visible because <laughs> right? he's like if I can't see at least an inch of your clitoris it's a no go <laughs> <laughs> Just like that feeling, just <sighs> resting on your bottom lip, don't you? That's all right. You can just, like it. You can like it. I think what turned you on so much about that encounter was that she had something that you thought she should have been ashamed of. Like at first, you were like, "Jesus, what a long clip!" But then y'all started fucking, and you were really into it. Right. And she, you, like you said, you played along with her confidence. I don't think she was playing with her confidence. I think she was very well aware that she had some good pussy, and she was about to turn you out. <laughs> Hey, hey, you ain't seen her. And you have been day. searching for her since. She's just going around <laughs> casting her long clit spells, on it, <laughs> turning them gay. <laughs> Let me not say that before y'all fuck around and think turning gay is a real thing. Now I'm picturing like somebody using that clit as like a wand, like Hogwarts. <laughs> when when God God <laughs> Love you. Lumis <laughs> Woo! Okay. Yeah, you're not gay, yes, baby. You're, you are. You're not gay. I would vote no, and I'm pretty gay. But All kudos right. to you. Huh. Father. Okay. Yeah, that was good for me. Yeah. See, it didn't even have to be true. Like, that was right. fun. The title of this email is Boyfriend Fell Through the Ceiling. Seriously. Okay. We'll get to that. All right. 
I come home from work and there are cop cars outside of our mother's house. We live at home. I walk in and see my sister's eyes red from tears and two cops speaking with her. The cops then proceed to tell me there's a hole in your ceiling. So I naively respond, well, we've lived here for about 10 years, so the house is starting to settle. Then I come to my senses and say that doesn't explain why cops are here and go. not maybe a contractor to fix the ceiling. <laughs> he says, you know Jason, right? And they leave shortly after. This is where I start to get confused. I immediately look at my sister and ask what's going on and don't leave anything out. Long story short, she says they tracked him down, him being the boyfriend, right. to our house. And he has warrants for burglaries. And he assaulted slash ran from a cop after getting stopped in her car. Okay. Which I guess explains how they ended up at our house in addition to them staking out our house for the past week. So they have, they've been known where he was at. And I have guess. been following his ass. It must be serious if they were staking him out to find his ass. I mean. They don't do that they don't if you be, took right. gum out of the five and dime. <laughs> you must have really right. done something. You are fucking up. <laughs> She ends up getting the hole fixed in my room by a family friend. But last night, my mother was ranting about how she doesn't care for the relationship and jokingly said she's going to look him up after finding out he was in jail to see what he did. So here's the thing. I'm assuming that the mother was not there when this whole thing happened. Right. Um, okay, so, so it goes on to say, I decide to Google his name first to see what she could possibly find. And there's an article with our address in it regarding oh the arrest. Oh it no. says not our exact address, but the 1200 block of uh, such and such, such, and such yeah. Mind you, I have told my grown ass sister to tell our mom repeatedly. But if the cops are ever at someone's because if the cops are ever at someone's house, the homeowner deserves to know, especially if an arrest and ceiling holes are involved. Fair. She even mentioned to me that the family friend who fixed the hole called her to ask about the ceiling holes just because he generally cares and is nosy while my sister was sitting right next to the mom. Okay. You would think she would take that opportunity to tell her then, right? Wrong. So once my mom started asking me questions and connecting the dots out loud, I just fucking told her. I don't feel bad because I told her dumbass to tell our mom immediately because mom is an Aquarius and hates to be embarrassed or told information she should know by strangers. We definitely have that cliche TV nosy neighbor who will literally flag my mom down to stop and ask about cops. Yes. And I didn't want my mom out here in the streets looking fucking crazy. Mm. But the plot twist is now our mom is mad at me. Another plot twist. Because I she's feel like there have been just a many. Couple. Many. All right. This is like the girl with the dragon tattoo or one of those like Everything thrillers. is happening. Everything is happening. Because she says I should have told her. Of course, I said I told, I told, I guess, the sister to tell you and asked her if she was in my shoes, would she have told you? She lied and said yes, but whatever, girl. So then she cussed me out and called me untrustworthy because I should have known I should have known my conniving sister would not have told her. Okay. Am I the? Am I wrong in any of this? I don't think so. I also don't feel like. I also don't like feeling like a cast member of Love and Hip Hop and an SVU crossover episode. Uh, okay. I guess that's the end. It says that she changed all the names already, and obviously my name ain't Electra Abundance, so you can right. just read it. Okay. But, so, so the boyfriend's, uh, the girl, the sister's boyfriend, is trash, and mm -hmm. clearly, you know. They say it's just a big, rich town, and he just comes from the <laughs> poorest part. So, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the fuck his major malfunction is. So, maybe I missed this, but were there holes in the ceiling because they were shooting with the cops? I don't know. How that part was magically left there? out. I'm assuming that they chased this nigga to the top, to, to the house. Mm -hmm. Somehow, I guess, maybe he got up on top of the house. to. I don't know. There was no explanation on how he fell through the hole. Okay. Um, or where the hole came or from. Or where the hole came from. She says she came home, and there was a hole, and her sister crying, and the cops was outside. <laughs> this is too much. And then a family friend fixed the hole promptly after. I'm guessing very promptly, because it mama... Been within a day or so, because it sounds like... It's all in the dark okay um well i understand that if you go through something this you know traumatic that you may f omit details when you know recounting this story because sure. there's just so many details to remember and the nigga fell in her room not in his girlfriend room <laughs> well, not even in the mama room 
your room. I mean, I would say, are you wrong? No. It was your sister's responsibility to tell her about her trifling ass boyfriend. Absolutely. And the shit that he did in her house. 1000%. Your mama taking it out on you is your mama being mad and want to take it out on somebody. And why she's not doing that to your sister or maybe she's doing it to both of y'all. Like both of you trifling bitches should have told me what happened in my house. Like that maybe I could understand. But I would look at it like. Mama, it was not my business to tell. Right. And so, therefore, I did not tell it. I gave her an opportunity to tell you. She did not take it. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you now. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I have had to do that before. Tell people, if you don't tell somebody X, Y, Z, I'm, I'm going to do, do it. it. And I'm going to say that I told that nigga to tell and he didn't. And that's the only reason I'm coming to you like this. Like, so, I don't see the problem. Right. I don't either. I feel like your mother is just very pissed that she's been housing a felon for all this while. And... <laughs> And so she's taking it out on you when you don't really deserve that. But I feel like everybody should be focused on getting this man as out of far lives. away yes. from everyone in the home. The number of children, the, the the number of felonies, the number of warrants. There and he just had a baby with somebody else a couple months ago. Right? How how is your sister this? emotionally connected to somebody who has a newborn in her car, running from the police? A nigga who is in so much trouble that the police actually have like special detectives assigned to find him. They have checkpoints. And- <laughs> They've been knowing where you live at, girl. They was just waiting on a chance to get his ass. And did so in your sister's Mind car. blown. Everybody needs to focus on getting this nigga out the house, out of y'all's lives. A question I would have is, is this type of behavior uh, typical of your mother? And like her blaming you for other people's mistakes, your mm, sister or otherwise. That's a good question. Because if it is, then I would like... I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to lead you to the same answer regardless of whether or not she is. <laughs> but if she is that way, then I would know, like, not to go, not to involve myself in anything that does not have to do with me mm-hmm. and my mom. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But I would make a point regardless to say to the both of them, like, I'm staying far and wide out of both of y'all business. How about that? Like, the <laughs> end. Please do not bring it to me. If the police bring it to me or if one of y'all niggas bring it to me through a hole in the ceiling, I am going to leave that with y'all. I'm letting you know now, do not turn to me in the future and ask me why did I not say anything because this is the answer. This moment right here, this the result it. of yep. this bullshit that ain't got nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. not my house not my nigga <laughs> like somehow it's my fault now when I was trying to be honest and fair with everyone so I'm not going to be involved in anybody's business from here on out just letting you know yeah in fact maybe even come up with like a petty like not a safe word but just like a phrase so in the future if this happens you could just say that phrase and bring everybody's memory back to this moment right. like right 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 Look, remember the last time that this happened remember when that nigga fell through that hole in the ceiling in my, in my room does everybody remember just say holes and I told you <laughs> Like, that's just your word for when, when word. you say holes you know like oh that's right when you are not in it and you are staying far away from it holes like I do understand your mama being like this is my house I'm letting y'all's grown asses stay Damn. in my house Obviously. and so I need to know what's going on when, in my house yes totally understand that get it and so maybe you know in the future you know, if you don't have the mama you could talk to like that, which, you know, sometimes you can't just tell it your happens. mama what you will and won't do. That's true. So in the future, I would tell my sister, like, look, bitch, the next time one of your goofy ass boyfriends do something dumb, you got one and a half hours to tell mama <laughs> before I FaceTime her and be like, this is what's happening in your house right now. Look at <laughs> it. It's debris everywhere. And I did not do it. Like, <laughs> it's going to be one or the other. Like, your sister has to step up and take responsibility for herself and her actions and the nigga that she has invited into her mother's house and the things that he has done because you can't be getting cussed out over shit that ain't it just is not fair right it's not fair and I would be I would be like stuck on how unfair it was that this had nothing to do with me the next time I come home and there's a giant hole in the house I'm grabbing a (laughs) post-it and I'm writing (laughs) on it that this ain't got nothing to do with me putting it on the front door and I'm leaving and I'm walking back out I will be at the public library until the rest of you are home and have decided who is at fault I'm gonna call mama Avenger. did you get my note you home yet did you say, okay, okay oh, you're I'm not home oh, okay girl text me when you get to the house <laughs> like I'm not I'm not dealing I'm with that I'm staying away our first letter this week comes from Athena 
who says, I am in a big dilemma. I'm a 26 year old bisexual black woman. <sighs> All right, sis. Here we go. And I have been dating my white boyfriend, who is straight, for about 15 months. Mentally and spiritually, we are in perfect sync with one another. Mm. I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder when I was 20. And even before we started dating officially, he was always taking initiative with my self-care techniques. We are on the same wavelength in terms of creativity and our ambitions. My mother loves him. And most importantly, his views on society check every box. I crept through some of his old posts prior to asking him his stance on the everyday struggles of POC and his own privilege and found out he's been speaking up and rallying far before he met me, which was a breath of fresh air. Mm. Here comes the but. Mm -hmm. The sex since the beginning has been very lackluster on his end. Between receiving oral and the actual penetration, I very rarely come. And I have to either fake it or guide him on how to make me come every single day time sis make sure she capitalized that wow however when it's me giving him head or taking control he orgasms with ease (laughs) of course i feel like it's very easy to get niggas to come but i mean it's much easier than like for women i mean i really don't think that's it i think that women actually try to make men come and men don't put forth that same effort no well yeah (laughs) (laughs) i feel like it can't be that hard because lesbians have been doing it easily for women lesbians 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 make each other come in like five ten minutes or less really it's not even always the marathon sex lesbians know the parts that's foolish that's foolish if a man really wants we're getting we're not even done with this young lady let me get back to this i voiced this concern to my boyfriend and we tried various things to spice things up including toys role play etc until finally he suggested that we have a threesome how did okay. he asked all right he asked if i wanted to have another guy or a girl and i told him i would rather him pick for us and we can agree on someone together why did you why did you do that we found a guy named paul through tinder oh, who is God. black oh here's the end of the relationship <laughs> <laughs> it's over it's over now move over it's my turn now it's over i like it Anyway, Paul is black. (laughs) Of course he is. (laughs) After a few exchanges and ground rules, we invited him over and we had the threesome. Work. Since my boyfriend is straight, he tried not to make any unwanted contact with Paul and vice versa. Mm -hmm. About a quarter way into Paul actually penetrating me, I realized he knew exactly what he was doing. I'm sure. Between him penetrating me, she keeps saying penetrate, (laughs) and him going down on me, he was 10 times better than my boyfriend and I didn't have to give him any instructions. After this night, my boyfriend noticed I had an intense orgasm, which I have never truly had with him. Mm -hmm. After that, we continued the threesomes about two more times with Paul. Paul Mm -hmm. didn't mind. Of course not. (laughs) Until last week when he messaged me asking if just he and I could have sex Uh and not my boyfriend. Of course. Because according to Paul, he ain't really doing shit for you anyway. (laughs) Damn. Damn. Paul's a real nigga. Don't worry. I did not go have sex with him. However, I have been thinking about it every single night. I bet you have. My boyfriend has expressed that he doesn't really want to do the threesomes anymore just for his own peace of mind because Uh he's starting to get uncomfortable with it. Yep. And I haven't even told him about the message Paul sent me. I bet you haven't. My dilemma is I really want to continue the encounters with Paul. Of course you do. However, I do not want to cheat on my boyfriend. Sex with my boyfriend is truly a chore to get through. And Paul (laughs) has been delivering every single time. Nigga, How? she said a chore that, to get through. Like, woo, okay, girl, I got to do the dishes, Nigga. got to fold the laundry, got to pack for this trip, got to fuck this man, oh, got to take the beans. God, <laughs> she compared sex with you to like cleaning the gutter. I got to thaw that salmon. <laughs> <laughs> wow as if just something to do that you don't really want to how do i express to my boyfriend <sighs> that he is sexually just not satisfying me should i tell him about the situation with paul and lastly am i just being a greedy bitch who needs to be happy with what she has sincerely athena athena there's nothing wrong with wanting to have great sex no nope. There's there's just nothing wrong with that. It's an important part of most people's relationships. Most, yes. And it is perfectly fine to end a relationship because you are not sexually satisfied. I don't think that you should tell him about the conversation with Paul, especially if you didn't respond to it. Right. Especially because you haven't engaged with Paul. Right. Um, 
But I do think that you should at least be honest with him about the fact that you aren't enjoying uh, the sex and why, like explicitly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that's going wrong time and time again that you don't like and how that could possibly change. And if it doesn't and you're really like that tempted to go and, and cheat on the nigga, then break up with him. Yeah. It's because it's not worth that. And and you're clearly not satisfied and you feel I feel like you're conflicted about it because there are so many great things about this white man. <laughs> you know, you've been struggling with your mental health and stuff like that. And he's helping you with your self-care and mm-hmm. y'all are in sync and creating all kinds of, I don't know, folk music or whatever y'all do together. <laughs> like y'all are really soap. vibing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, artisanal soaps yeah. and things along that nature. Hemp shoes. Yeah. Other things white people like vegan barbecue. So y'all are probably doing all that fun shit together it feels really good you and your white man in his jesus sandals but however when it comes down to it he is not hitting it like you deserve and that's just something that and you have tried i would tell you to try i would i would and but you have done that you yeah y'all try to do toys you try to do role play all this other stuff and he's just not figuring out the technique to make your body work so i would say to him look what we have is great i really love you i would love for us to continue this relationship however i cannot go throughout my life being sexually unsatisfied like it can't work that way and he chose paul he chose paul (laughs) and she agreed to paul and paul came through like well let a real nigga take over and handle this business and And told her straight out damn (laughs) paul was like why even play so why is he even in the room girl which also shout out to Her you for just having two men that well, didn't it just take turns on you this sounds great <laughs> this sounds ideal I don't know <laughs> so sis um, I won't tell you to break up with him right now but I will tell him sexually it's not happening yeah and I really need it to happen I and really honestly do. it could probably step up a few notches and still won't be as good as Paul's did right. well but I if mean you maybe. are getting your rocks off and having good sex mm-hmm. with your boyfriend yes and get over it because because the emotional connection to sex is very real as well yes and it's possible that if your boyfriend just learns how to please you then the emotional connection y'all have will make the sex even better yes but he does have to get the basics of pleasing you down yeah and it should not be impossible to to do this this isn't like I'm bad at fucking, so I'm just going to be bad at fucking forever. No, you can you can learn. You can adjust to different partners. Maybe he's just right. used to fucking one way because that's how his ex-girlfriend liked Probably, it. Yeah, maybe. But he has to learn how to, to how to please your body. So right. I would put it to him straight like that. Like, look, I can't be out here going without nuts. So if you don't want me to if you don't want me to leave you for a nigga, you're going to have to figure something out. <laughs> What's up, Paul? Maybe not that, uh... <laughs> Maybe you are not that clear. I mean, say it in, like, a nice way. Yeah, like but, a kind way. Right? <laughs> say it in a way that isn't, like, bitchy, but just give him the heads up that you're gonna have to leave if yeah. you don't get that shit together. Be and, very, yeah. very honest. See how things change. Because I feel like it is... Like, some people might make you feel like there's something wrong with that and there isn't. No, there is the. I don't care if everything else about him is perfect. Like I don't care. Either. I really don't. Unless he's going to give important. you right. Unless he's going to give you like a free pass to go fuck whoever you want to. And see, I don't. I don't believe. And no, he's so. already said we're not doing the threesomes no more. I'm uncomfortable. Right. Because you over here coming all over the place. Nigga, you <laughs> should have been uncomfortable. You saw Paul's photograph. You should have been taking notes on what Paul is doing. You really brought a nigga into this house to fuck your nigga girlfriend. <laughs> Bruh. And you wonder why <laughs> that now all of a sudden she you should have like, been the one DMing Paul whew, and asking Paul. him questions and see if he could send you a doc a word do document. A, do you have a PDF maybe pages, that you share with friends? Anything something. with some notes. Can I donate to your Patreon? I need some help. Something. What does what is it gonna take? Woo! Child, good luck to you though, girl, because it is hard when everything is great except one thing, but that mm, is one especially thing. Especially that, that one thing. You really deserve to be satisfied. Both of you. So, yes. So, and please now it's believe. Just him. Yeah. <laughs>
Last one comes from Gina, who said very nice things about us and the show. And then she brought up Thanks. my favorite, therapy. She said, y'all both discussed the positive impacts of therapy, which makes me so happy because I'm a therapist who works with communities of color in New York City. Work. And I often have to challenge some of the stigmas folks have about mental health and seeing a therapist. I enjoy hearing y'all help to destigmatize this. Like both of you, I believe therapy can be a meaningful and impactful space to work through personal challenges in a supportive space. But I do believe that people must be committed to doing the work which you both have expressed doing. Yes, and it is by far the hard part. Yeah. <laughs> by Listen, far. You're talking about breaking just decades okay. of habit. And, tr- and trauma and trash. Oh, so. That still fucks with me? Yeah. Like, oh, wow, I'm really hmm, still in my feelings behind okay. something that happened when I was nine. That's wild. All right. If you're comfortable sharing, what have been some challenging commitments you've had to make for your own mental and emotional wellness? And what have been some joyful results of this hard work? Love you both. If you're interested in crafting a free to low cost resource of therapists of color in the NYC area to share with your listeners, let's do it with love, Gina. Gina, first of all, that sounds like a great idea because low cost and therapists of color is two things that need to go together more often. Yeah. Like, let's make that a reg. People of color are broker and also and more need, traumatized. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> so, so I don't know how we can get something like that started, but that sounds like something we need to be working on. I brought this up, uh, because first of all, we stand for therapy. And also because I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I wanted to start doing maybe a little mini segment on therapy. I have yeah. a, a poll going on my Twitter right now where I'm uh, looking for suggestions for the name of the segment. It's between shit my therapist says, niggas need to know, and Crystal's couch. These are all listeners submitted. Um, uh, what am I thinking of? What's the word? Suggestions. So I want to start doing that probably next week. Um, But I've been thinking a lot about the hard work of therapy because I feel like that's how the segment is basically going to be crafted. Just me going, here are some lessons that I've picked up and how they have had an effect on me. So one of the big things for me has been um, growing up in the Bible Belt with conservative family and, you know, really being raised in that environment of kind of always saying yes and being accommodating to people no matter what. I have a very big problem that I did not even know was a problem with always wanting everybody to be happy and comfortable and having a good time and just like not not everybody, not like people I don't know, but the people I'm particularly close to or people I allow into my home. I just want to go above and beyond and I end up doing the most and things that most importantly, nobody asked me to do. Like I just kind of go out of my way to the point where I make myself uncomfortable and it's very difficult for me to say no. It's it's difficult for me to say no to myself when I'm just like voluntarily doing the most. And it's difficult for me to say no when I really want to. Like if somebody asks me for something and I don't necessarily feel comfortable doing it or don't really want to share myself or my space in that way it is very hard for me to be like, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. So I've been working with my therapist over the past several months on why I feel that way and how I am allowed to prioritize myself and my own wants and needs have to come first because you can't take care of everybody else out of an empty cup. First of all, I don't have to take care of everybody else. Everybody else has their own cups, their own families, you know, their own kids, whatever. It's not my responsibility to save everybody else. But I also, if I want to do that, I can't give all of this consideration and love and care and support to everybody else and not pour all of that back into myself. And that is something I have never learned how to do, which is like a very real aspect of self-care that I have just been missing my whole life. I have never known, <clears throat> excuse me, how to just pour like compassion into my own self. I can give right. it to everybody else. But when it comes to me, I'm the type who will kick myself a million times for making one mistake and I will never let it go. I'll be like, you stupid bitch. Like, wake up in the morning dragging myself. Like, I see you woke up today with your trash ass. Remember when you said A and what you really meant was Z with your dumb ass self? <laughs> Maybe one day you'll grow up and stop being such a dumb ass and get your shit together and stop fucking up on small things. Like, I do that sort of thing. And that's just one part of like 
not talking to yourself like trash and treating yourself like you matter and you're important and it's okay to fuck up and you're proud of yourself because you're human and you're doing the best you can to get through this thing called life. Like, I'm human just like everybody else. I'm trying to get through this shit. I'm going to fuck up occasionally, but I have to have the grace to forgive myself and move on and do better and learn from those things and also be able to say yes when I really, really want to and feel compelled to and feel okay with saying no when I really, really don't. I have a hard time doing that. So that has been one of the more challenging things for me, learning all that in therapy and then going and putting it into action in the real world and actually doing it like unpacking all that and spending lots of time at home thinking about therapy and the ways I need to change and being mindful and like just going to the mirror and being like, bitch, I am really proud of you. Just saying something like that has been so huge for me, but also very difficult. So if you want to share something that's been challenging for you, feel free. If not, you know, I get it. That's very personal and you don't have to. But I mean, for me, I feel like I have... I always have something different to talk to my therapist about, but it usually all comes back to the same thing, which is very similar to what you were talking about. And then I overthink a lot about pretty much everything. And I think about like things from everything that I need to do this week to then everything that needs to be done today and the best way to do them on the order in which to do them. And then I worry about, you know, making everybody else happy. And I have so many times where I inconvenience myself because I want for everybody else to be situated or happy. And a lot of times, like you're saying, those things aren't even necessary. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody would have been straight if I would have just sat my ass down and been quiet and not having to like extend myself or mix myself and all of these things all of the time. I just don't. You know, I think that a lot of the things that trouble me from, like, the pressure of being recognized so easily or judged or whatever, like, a lot of that is from, again, like, a mentality that I've had for most of my life. I've suppressed it and can a lot of times, but other times it's just... You know, a part of who I am and it's difficult, I think, to I think it's difficult to like work, especially in the the field that we do where you have to be creative and you have to be you have to hold yourself accountable and you have to be disciplined mm-hmm. and you have to do all of these things in order to remain creative, to remain working, to have the energy that you need to get your ass up every single day and do whatever is necessary for you to remain active, remain working and like yes. pay your fucking bills. And when you have the ability to kind of just be like, fuck today, and you can, Mm -hmm. it's so easy to just be like, fuck today, because I can, especially if you don't feel good about yourself. And I know that, like, sometimes I honestly feel defective. Like, I feel almost like I don't have a proper working human brain. Because sometimes I think that, like, I'm just thinking too much about things or worrying about stuff that doesn't need to be worried about or even when we're talking about shit like you know the 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 dog turd in office we i think about a lot of those things from like (sighs) a global scale and like why are people so yes. hateful? What is the root of it? Let me go through the history of life and figure out what. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel like my brain is always on 10,000. I don't know how to slow things down. I don't know how to compartmentalize anything. Yes. My brain is always running wild and it's always in, like, pessimism mode. And so therapy for me has taught me uh, in many ways to just kind of chill out, give myself a break, be kinder to myself be fair with myself allow people to fix their own shit get the fuck up off on their own two feet and do yeah. what the fuck they need to yeah. because a in many cases they didn't ask me to do shit for them mm-hmm. and b in many motherfucking cases they need to because there wasn't mm-hmm. really anybody that was like here girl here is youtube this is how you build a blog here is how, how you know here is a camera to shoot it yeah here is how a podcast works you know what i'm saying like it, so I, I, I'm i just learning, I think, to, like, give myself a break, 
cool down, breathe, and also look at the the journey that I've been on and a lot of the things that I've been able to do as the kid that was wearing hoodies in 85 degree weather in Miami to hide from people because you didn't want to be seen as that kid that like didn't have a voice and was afraid of people to be like on the bill at fucking essence fest Oh yes. to be, you know, selling out shows around the fucking Mm -hmm. world to be on a Netflix show that you loved when it was a movie, all of that stuff. For me, a lot of that is just me working and I'm grateful for it. But when you look back at it and you're just like, you did that. And yet, and some I don't shit do that. I don't. I ever. don't let myself like, have that moment. I'm I, never like, girl. Never do look it. Look at the accomplishment. I don't. And then when I, mm, never mind. I'm sorry. I don't want to take your. Uh, no, your you're talking. right. It's just like when, when, for me, it's like it was done. It went well. Amen. Great. Next. You know what I'm saying? Let's because smoke. it's like, yes. right. Let's smoke and let's do whatever it is it's that we have to do next. next work yes. because I got to. Like I said, you. We have to be responsible for ourselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't give myself the opportunity that much to look back and and like really appreciate how hard we've worked, all of the stuff that we've done to be where we are right now. Mm-hmm. And I, when I have done that a little bit, it 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 gives me a bit of like calm because it's like, bitch, you ain't ever really known shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't stay in fucking Sex. school. I didn't like go to learn fucking sound engineering or like comedy school yeah, or nothing or whatever or whatever. And I was still able to accomplish a lot of things I never, ever, 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 ever would have expected to. So like, if I would just calm the fuck down and shut the fuck up and stay prayed up and keep God first and do all of the things yeah. that I'm supposed to do, even in all of my raggedy maybe I'll be fine <laughs> like and then I have some water and I take a nap or play a game yes and and allowing myself the space to feel however I feel has been very important in that yep. and sometimes I have days where I am just stuck in my head and on the couch and I can't figure out why I can't get past myself and I just but I just can't do it and then other days I'm super productive and ready to take on the world and can get so many different things done but just allowing myself to feel whatever it is I'm feeling go through whatever it is I'm going through and not beating myself up for it one way or the other and just trying to remind myself like girl you're you're doing okay like you're taking care of yourself you know, you are not <laughs> you are not all the horrible things your brain tells you that you are or you're not like you're not. I don't know. I don't. It's not a worthless thing. It's, it's just, just that, that I don't ever take my foot off my neck. Exactly. I never. That's I never why when knew. we were at Essence and and I was bawling so hard during Fantasia's moment where she brought her brother out because I was watching that. And I was just like, I it like my my life could literally be worse so much worse tomorrow yesterday today or whatever and she brought this young man out in this wheelchair and he just had the biggest smile on his face so proud of his sister hey what's up y'all i'm at the stage at essence or whatever meanwhile i was up in my hotel room like for the majority of the weekend like there are too many people here and my brain is gonna explode i'm miserable like for what go get your fucking grenade and shut the fuck up I mean, like, but that's how when you're in your own head and you're in yeah. it, there is no bitch. Let's just go get a grenade and say, fuck it. Like you can do that and still not really feel. it. Yes. You have to just like I, I think that, yeah, I'm learning to just be like aware of the process that I put myself through or like my habits emotionally, physically, spiritually, all of that stuff. And so when I see it coming, I can check myself a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And then I'm also learning through my therapist's methods of like combating all of that stuff and just stuff to do every day, whether it is like my diet or whatever mm-hmm. really going on uh, besides meds. So many that. things I need to be doing. And it's just like the better care I take care of myself or the better care I give myself, the more I am able to do those things. Is, but that has been very, very huge for me. Just learning how to really take care of myself. It doesn't mean, you know, buying whatever you want at Macy's or whatever. I yeah, know. no. <laughs> it's like being treating yourself being the nice. way you treat your friends. Yes. Which I have had a real issue doing. Like being a best friend to yes. you. Yes. Being compassionate. Like some of the things my, ther- my therapist would be like, If, you know, if one of your friends, and she knows all y'all names, she was like, if somebody said, you know, 
person A and they met person N, would you really sit there and like drag Kiev like for weeks about it? Would you be like, you goofy bitch, how dare you mix something up? Like, no, of course not. You would be like, sis, we all fuck up sometimes. It yeah. makes no difference. Yeah. You're still a boss bitch. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Hashtag we have a PhD. Yes, hashtag we have a PhD. Can't nobody tell us nothing. Like, it would very much be like that. Whereas, but But when I'm talking to myself... There is none of that, or there was yeah, none of that graciousness. So that has been very big for me. Join us next week on Crystal's Couch, where niggas need to know uh, shit my therapist says. I don't know. We'll figure out what the title is. Thanks again to our sponsor, GOAT. If you're buying sneakers online, there is more than a coin flips chance that the shoe you're looking at is fake. And not all of us can tell you know, with the naked eye, whether it's real or not. That's why GOAT.com is the safest way to buy and sell authentic sneakers online. They're the largest marketplace in the world for authentic Yeezys. If y'all love Yeezys, you know, I have heard that from all you fools. Jordans, of course, which I am getting into more and more in my big age and over 600,000 other sneaker listings. They've made the whole process frictionless and trustworthy. They do this by only accepting sellers with the best reputation and they verify all sneakers sneakers to ensure their authenticity for buyers so it's no risk for you every detail is inspected from the stitching and the color to the size and the weight goat certifies that every pair of sneakers on their site matches exact factory specifications with over half a million sneakers on the platform and 10 million users you will not find better prices for verified 100 percent authentic sneakers tennis shoes if you're me anywhere else so go ahead and find the perfect Authentic sneaker at goat.com slash the read. That's G O A T dot com slash the R E A D. Plus, if you go right now before the sneakers you want are gone, you'll snag them before they're gone, fool. It's goat.com slash the read. G O A T dot com slash the R E A D. 100% authentic sneakers for all you sneakerheads out there. Now let's wrap up the show. I am going to pass my read this week. Pass the read like we used to. Okay. Um, this comes from Ashley Bria. Um, it says, Dear white people, I'd like to share an experience I had online at a food cart near a bar where one of your brethren decided to use the oppression of people of color oh, to Lord. make himself a victim of what you asked. <laughs> Being declined entry to a bar. Let's have a moment of silence to reflect on the injustice. Anyway. <laughs> White bro and friend are... On- That's... She wrote. Okay. <laughs> White bro. <laughs> White bro and friend are online outside getting rowdy. Why? Me and my black brother standing next to me speculated. Doesn't he know there are like five police right here? Oh, yes, we remembered. White folks aren't afraid of police. It's Carry true. on. It's true. White bro's friend proceeded to pop on the fellow whites. Um, in parentheses, she put, y'all need to keep an eye on this white on white crime. <laughs> and a scuffle ensues. Police come running and tackle the perps. To me and black bro's astonishment, I thought only black folks got tackled like that, I exclaimed. While SCAD students stood behind me uncomfortably. I don't know what school that is. I know. Southern SCAD? California. I don't know. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Here's South Carolina. Here's when my mind was blown. White bro's friend gets put in cuffs. White bro explodes in white indignation. On who? The whole police. He shouts, are you fucking kidding me? This is bullshit. And then you wonder why everyone hates you. This is police brutality. Me and my black bro's jaws respectively hit the ground. No, no, white bro. No, tell me this is not what you're going to do. People hate the police because they can't get into bars after fighting. Not Philando Castile, Walter Scott, Freddie Gray. Is you serious? Oh, my God. I know I have a college education, but this exchange warranted no subject verb agreement because it was outrageous. Oh, I love that sentence. Me too. (laughs) White bro proceeds to start a chant with the crowd against the police. Fuck you. Fuck you. The thugs shouted, outraged. (laughs) Yes, the fuck. Spittle flew from their lips. Revolutionary fire crackled in their eyes. Go off, sis. They were united for a cause. They were serving a purpose. I was waiting for them to link arms and sing Scandinavian spirituals. Oh, my God. Who knows? 
Me and my friend and black bro quietly walked in the other direction. I share my experience to say this. It is not okay to make a legitimate issue that is causing the death of hundreds a year about you. It is not okay to minimize police brutality to your stupid ass getting arrested because you were fighting outside of a bar. First of all, your gripes were unwarranted. You were wrong. Second of all, if by some off chance you just, you do experience bl- police brutality and that's what finally makes you stand up and say something, go to hell. People of color have been screaming it from the rooftop for years. How selfish can you be to only give a shit when it happens to you or a loved one? I'm offering the sincerest of fuck yous to that guy and mm-hmm. any other son of a bitch who decides to hop on the bandwagon for a cause only when it affects them. And that's what Ashley Bria McCormick you know had to what? say. And I, first of all, Ashley, where's your book, girl? <laughs> I want it. <laughs> the way you wrote that. Scandinavian spirituals? Yes. What the fuck does that sound like? I guess what Rose Irish sings Irish niggas herself, doing they tap dancing Rose Nyland sings it before oh bed. Oh my God, good night. The fluver clobbing. I don't. <laughs> it don't even matter. Hooden coddles? I love it. Um, so thank you so much for that. I thought that, that was absolutely fantastic. And I yes, had a great time with that one. White boys and cargos and, and polos usually, mm-hmm. you know, they do this is chant why out nobody respects them. things like that when it happens to them. It does have to happen to them first, but then they don't, they still don't acknowledge when it happens to us. Yeah, no. What? And if a black boy was detained by police and decided to start yelling at them, that would have ended very, very differently. This just would have shut everybody black around. Uh, <laughs> we didn't you want to riot. Also, and you, ma'am. Just anybody. But this is what you get for being here. Brown. Right. So, uh, girl, I share your frustration. So my read this week um, goes out to an idiot by the name of Veronica Vega. For those of you who don't know, because why should you? Oh, God. <laughs> Veronica Vega is an alleged artist um, living in Miami, Florida, who is currently on Love and Hip Hop Miami on VH1. I've known who Veronica Vega is for a few years now because she first accosted my life uh, with a song and video, I believe, that is called Pay Me. It is one of the most repetitive, dumbass, ridiculous songs I've ever heard. And not just because I think Veronica Vega is an idiot. This is before I knew. Um... I I respect it. It's just a it's just a terrible song. It is what it is. So on the most recent episode of Love Hip Hop Miami, Veronica Vega uh was in a scene with Steph LaCour and was lucky enough to also be in a scene with Trina. Um <sighs> Oh Lord. I haven't watched the last episode, so I'm finna listen like anybody else. First of all, I want to commend Trina for every scene that she's in is like somebody else. like you know like trina is not there telling all her business trina is like oh my cousin and and trick are going through it oh my other cousin is crazy and gay oh my home girl's rapping and she's flopping and like <laughs> in the meantime i'm working and i'm cute like you know what i'm saying like trina's not on there beefing nobody she's not on there doing the most she's popping up in everybody's scenes and she's like really damn let's do something so anyway, love right, my girl. Real. Um, so she was sitting in there and they're talking about, oh, you know, we're in the studio or whatever. They're always pretending to do on the show. And Trina was like, uh, she said to Veronica at some point, she brought up the fact that Veronica says nigga in that song like a bunch of times. Because again, the song is like, pay me nigga, don't bullshit me. And she says that like eight times. And then she'll be like, freaking on a pole, freaking on a pole, freaking on a pole. And she'll say that eight times. Then she'll be like, it must be your money because it ain't your dick. She says that eight times. It's there. It's like, it's like I'm the world's already. longest hook. It is awful. Okay. Anyway, she uses the word nigga loads of times. Veronica Vega is not black. Right. Veronica Vega, I don't know if she's Cuban or what. She's a Latina girl. Cool. White Latina. Yes, quite. Um, so Trina, and let me tell you something. I was watching this on Mr. World Premiere, and I had to pause it and run around the room real quick because I was gagging at the fact that she even brought it up. <laughs> and I don't know if she brought it up like because she wanted to or if it was something that Veronica hears all of the time. And so she was like, I want to address this in a scene. I don't really know how it works, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was either one. Either way, mm-hmm. Trina brings it up. Veronica Vega is reasoning for using the word nigga was something as as follows. She says that because she is from Hylia, which is like... Where Link lives? Oh, that's Hyrule. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Wow. You could continue. Hylia is like uh, (laughs) predominantly Latin 
neighborhood in I am so sorry in Miami. <laughs> it's like a hood. It's it, it's like a hood. It's not like not even like the worst of the worst okay. in Miami alone. Okay. You know, it gets plenty worse than that. But it's like whatever. Right. So she says, you know, because she's from Hialeah and she's poor and sh- when she's around white people, they look at her as just like this poor trashy bitch and so that makes her a nigga. <sighs> And she's like, you know, I'm like this and I'm from the hood and Steph is, you know, from she comes from the hood and Trina's from the hood and like, no. we all niggas and like, white people all look at us the same anyway. And then she even says, bitch, uh, uh, she even says, <laughs> white people wear. I'm sorry. She even says, um, look at all the people in Puerto Rico without power right now. All of those poor people suffering right now. Them, they niggas. Oh, no, she didn't. What? Oh, she got to go. <laughs> what? She got and to so, go. hold on. I really want to see if I can actually play. I don't even know the legalities of this, but I just really, I went up for Trina's response. It was like in her little confessional interview thing or whatever, but it just made me laugh. Okay. Um, the point is that um, I can't understand how you feel. Like, because... You're a broke hood bitch from Hialeah that <laughs> I keep you, feel, <laughs> you feel like that permits you to say the word nigga. And I'm just not understanding that part. Um, yeah. Leah, so she feels that she's some part black. So with that being said, that's her business. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Trina. <laughs> yeah, that's her business. Trina said, Veronica says the N-word a lot. <laughs> and she feels like that because she's from Hialeah, that makes her some part black. With that being said, that's her business. I love it. Meaning, I, clearly, I don't rock with this, whatever this bitch is talking about. But she thinks she can say I'm going to leave her dumb ass I'm, alone right I'm going to leave it alone I don't have time for that sweetie just because you from the hood girl and probably sleep with and really enjoy black men you just Garrett with a pussy it doesn't mean that you are you allowed to say nigga or you should be allowed this is again why I, what I'm saying about people challenging us mm-hmm. with clear things that we say it is not complicated how that works you are not, not black all. You should not say this word. If you do, you're setting yourself up to get dragged or worse. Right. That's just the way things are exactly. set up. Period. The end. Most people get it. Apparently, you don't. I wish There's you no would. excuses. The better response to um, I'm saying nigga on a song, when people ask you about that, a better response would be to just shrug your shoulders. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> just be like, well, I don't what, what is this issue? I don't get it. The fuck? What the fuck you mean? Like, white, well, white people all look at us the same anyway, and we broke anyway, and we all been the same. But yes, you're a broke girl from, La- <laughs> from Hylia, hey, you Latina or whatever, and white people probably look at you differently. Yes, there are words for all of that too. Like, right. there are horror horrible words that people use for women. There are horrible words that people use for Latino girls. There are horrible words that people use from for people from the hood. Mm-hmm. Nobody's calling you nigga the way that we are called the word nigga. Right. Like, maybe some of your friends and a couple of niggas that don't know no better allow you to use that word and call you that word too. But you are not going to say that just because you're from the ghetto and you poor or you whatever, yes. you're non-Caucasian, you that you should be able to say that shit too. You sound dumb. <laughs> maybe white people look at you like you're trash and you're low class because you be out in public with your leg up on the table like you don't have no fucking home training. Maybe that is what it is. With your trash and low ca- class ass, bitch. She was in the very, like the previous episode get into an argument with that rich girl that threw that water in her face with that drink <laughs> and had her leg cocked up on the table with this terrible ass posture like she was at home. Maybe that's why people look at you like mm-hmm. you trash girl because you present people, because you, are you trash. present yourself as trash. I don't care how many black backup dancers you have in your videos. I don't care how many black people you know that's cool with you using the word nigga. Say You're not going to get away with saying that word just because you from the hood too. It's words that people call you too. Don't like let me remind you niggas I'm also from Miami and I know plenty of girls like this. Men too. And a lot of y'all quiet as you want to try to keep oh, it. Oh shit. 
a lot of y'all will align yourself with whiteness as quick as you can. You'll snatch some goals out of the bottom row of your fucking jaw as quickly as possible and make sure that hair is real straight and put on some shit from uh, Lululemon or whatever and get to jogging so right next to these other bitches and hoping that they don't clock you. Like, let's keep it all the way real Miami. You know how a lot of you white uh, white Latina girls be a white like l- Latino men. A lot of them really be out here clocking and treating niggas like trash because that's how you're set up <laughs> to really even come into the country acting. Be very Republican. That's why whenever the Donald Trumps and the Bushes and all the other Republicans ride down to Miami, they got loads of motherfuckers besides white folks I love this coming song. out in droves. Like, we already know what time it is. Right. We know what time it is. And if you're not one of those types of girls, cool. But you're not going to try and make up no excuses and say, well, I'm from the hood, I'm from the ghetto or whatever, and white people look at me like I'm trash, so I'm a nigga too. No, you cannot reinvent slurs. You cannot reinvent slurs to convenient you or to be convenient for you after you done said or done some dumb shit. It doesn't work like that. It's the same thing with the word faggot. When y'all say faggot or when Offset said queer, or it was it? It's, yeah, it was she's queer. dead. Offset, yes. Like I forgot which one he was. Not you asking me. <laughs> Like when when people are telling you, bitch, you have no right saying these things, and here are all of the reasons why. Especially multiple people telling you the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's not your position there to then challenge us and be like, oh well, well, I feel like I should be. At, uh, uh, why, after the many years that niggas after like since niggas reclaimed nigga. Since then, why would we just all of a sudden switch it up and make an exception for Veronica Vega? Right. Like, you can't reclaim a slur that never really applied to you in the first place. That's how it is. If you don't get you to do want to take whatever slurs they use for women or for uh, hood bitches or, or for, for white Latinas. White Latina girl, if you want to take whatever slurs they use for that and reclaim that and use that as something fun, get it popping or trying and, and making it into a hashtag, that's your business. Right. Because you should understand Come the plight or the sting. I mean, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> don't question why I stand for this yes. woman. Like, that's on you. You may do that. That's why I feel like I'm free to run around and say fag if I want to. I'm not going to say it to just any old gay person because right. I don't expect for every homosexual person to be cool with gay people saying faggot freely. Mm-hmm. You know, like I understand that not everybody feels that way. Right. But for like the people around me that are close to me that I have like I have a mutual respect with. Right. I know that like you can say faggot in front of me and it doesn't bother me because I know who you are. Right. I know where your heart is. But we, we have, like, know each other. Exactly. We have that basis of familiarity that you and some random person would not have. It's the same thing with the black community and the word nigga. Right. It's the exact same thing. And that's how I feel about you saying dyke. Like, I don't give a shit if you or Dustin or Asante or Drew say dyke because what does that really mean to me coming from a bunch of fags? <laughs> like, like, but that's because we're all fucking exactly. friends and we can talk like that around each other. People who are not in our community and we don't know like that don't get to say that type of shit. And even if it was like some random person saying nigga around me or whatever, like you have to understand that if you're not the type of person that that slur would be targeted for, you don't get to turn around and be like, oh, well, I'm reclaiming nigga, even though you are white as the live long day and nobody has ever in your fucking life called you a nigga. Like, bitch, not in the way that means danger, right. not right. in the way that means I don't like you for your blackness, so right. you're in trouble now. Like, yeah, I've been right. called nigga in a joking way millions of times, but I've been called nigga in a I'm going to string your nigger ass up way yeah. in enough times that makes me uncomfortable for anybody who ain't visibly blatantly black to say that shit to me. I have period. been called nigger to mean you don't deserve the same respect or life or 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 opportunity as me or whatever because you're uh, because of the color of your skin right you have not so you cannot take that same word because uh, sorry black people make everything lit and super fun and so you want to gravitate towards (laughs) it even derogatory words say it again and so now you want to say the word nigga because you feel like it's fun and niggas do it and you want to make up whatever dumb whack ass cockamamie ass (laughs) excuse for you to use it you sound (laughs) dumb um, don't ever say that shit again for uneducated. anybody to hear. It would be better for you to be like, I just felt like I could. Yeah. 
I just felt like I could say it. And now y'all are mad, so I guess I can't. Because it's clear that you just felt like you could. Now you're just making your sound, yourself sound dumb and weak by making up some fake-ass, stupid-ass shit in front of an actual black person. Two! Right. On top of everything else, like... But one I respect. <laughs> But, like, you as a white Latina need to be very careful about the privilege you occupy and the space that you have that black Latinas like Amara La Negra do not have. Right. And the opportunities that they don't. Like, yes, you get shitted on for being Latina and for being a woman, but not for being a black Latina. And that is very fucking specific. That is a certain identity that you don't know shit about. So just stay in your fucking lane when black Latinas are talking about about their shit and don't try to act like because you're Latina you're black too because that's not how it fucking works <laughs> it doesn't it does not follow how it fucking works All you could do, I mean reading Google like it's, they're so helpful or just like they're the free, very even. same woman on your cast who talks about it and you or didn't that. even digest that properly because I'm sure you felt super cute and super like you know best friendy when you right, went to that nigga who then said that he would apologize to her for being racist if Church. you went on a date with him and that was like oh cool and then when you ambushed her with a nigga who said some racist shit to her and she wasn't for it and told you she wasn't for it, she was an ungrateful bitch. So what do you really understand about what anybody black is saying about their struggle? Do you just want to say nigga? Yes. Oh, Can you say man. nigga? No. Can that shit get the goals knocked out of your mouth? Probably. So, fuck Veronica Vega. Your music was trash anyway. Right. So It was trash anyway. So fuck her. <laughs> entirely and like I said a few weeks ago it's just a, it was just a matter of time I was waiting for Veronica Vega to piss me off so the fact that I haven't seen this episode yet don't even really mean nothing because I was waiting on you to do your white girl thing and you did it so there it goes and would never believe that because she's a, a ghetto because bitch. right because she's uh, right stereotypically ghetto or a Latina and that, and like I'm not trying to take your identities away from you but understand the way you're perceived versus whatever you think about yourself like sis you're still white as fuck very much so so acknowledge that and understand the privileges that come with that that the rest of us don't get and it seems like asking bitches to acknowledge that is just too fucking much like they just can't get it they can't wrap that actually very it. wide of you the bitch I'm cussing out this week is named Diana Volatich I'm assuming that's how you say it I might be fucking up her last name that's she has a nice. podcast called Unapologetic um, she is a social study teacher at Crystal River Middle School in Crystal River, Florida. Shout oh. out to Florida. I already know what I feel about that. And Diana Volatic, Titch, whatever. Don't matter. Um, has been <laughs> uh on this podcast talking about her white supremacist values. Wait, 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 wait. She's a, she has a podcast and she's a teacher. She has a podcast and she's a teacher. So here's the thing: she had an alter ego. Or she went under a fake name, Tiana Dalachov. And Tiana Dalachov is the one who had this white supremacist nationalist podcast. She's the one. Yeah. Tiana is the one who had the active Twitter account. Tiana is the one who uh, was talking about Muslims need to be eradicated from the nice. earth. And nice. she's anti-Semitic. She was even pushing some of these ideals in the classroom and Work. talking about it. She was of saying, course. you know, the principal came up to me and was like, you know, I've gotten complaints from parents. Is there anything for me to worry about? And she was just like, no. And it was dropped because she's white. <laughs> of course. What? She talks about how yes, investigation. clearly there's a difference between, you know, black kids, you know, a kid from Nigeria and a kid from Sweden. They're not going to learn the same way or have the same IQ because, you know, certain races aren't as smart as others. Like she's that bitch. She's that fucking wretched. So the thing is, Tiana Dalachov is the one who has been openly saying these things on Twitter and on her podcast. However, where Diana's dumbass fucked up of course is did. that she used mm -hmm. her own photo mm -hmm. online. Of course. <laughs> like, and there were all these other like when they when they were investigating, you know, this podcast and is this her or not? It was that she had she talked openly about being a public school teacher. She said, you know, how long she had been working at the school. Obviously didn't get the name of it, but it matched up with how long she had really been oh, sorry, working on it. Right. She says that she said that she lived in Crystal River, Florida, which how dumb could you be putting your actual city? What? 
in an essay. Like, why would you do that? She's 25 years old. So again, old enough, not even to know better or whatever. This bitch is a teacher. Now, granted, it's at a mostly white school, but I am sure that the black and brown kids who were you know, being taught by this bitch were bearing the brunt of all of her dumb shit. Had to have been of over course. the past school years or whatever, school year or whatever. So she really fucked up when she put her own damn picture on the alter ego <laughs> account. That racists are is typically dumb. stupid. But racists <laughs> from is Florida. So fucking stupid. I don't know. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, bitch? A, you. Ugh. She, I mean, and I, when I tell you she was on Twitter, it wasn't just like posting the link to her show and then logging off. She was like arguing with people, retweeting the Nazis. With her and, picture. Yeah, with her real photo and a fake name and thought that was all she needed to stay anonymous. <laughs> Bitch, it's 2018. Are you fucking kidding? Niggas and could you're run, 25. And she's wearing the same earrings in the Twitter picture as she is in her official photo on the school's website. Like, she could not make it easier for them to find her. Bitch, it's Google image search days at this point. Don't you know that anybody can save your Twitter avatar, run it through Google image search and see where else that photo has been uploaded to the Internet? Like, th it doesn't even take long. And then you sat around and gave out revealing details about your life on a podcast, the, your real, true information. And you never thought anybody was going to draw. It didn't even take long for them to draw the line. But goddamn. So she has been um, fired. Of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Even a mostly white school district has to admit that. And they probably is find egregious. her like, you know, our hands are tied. <laughs> Diana, I really hate to do this, but <laughs> the open hatred of niggers and Jews—it's <laughs> just not tolerable. I unfortunately, guess. we would love to. You know how we feel, but we just can't. Just it's public. Like we just don't. There's no way around this, right? You, she really should be teaching how not to behave on social media because I can't believe a teacher is this fucking stupid. I cannot. And somebody young, you're 25. You grew up with social media. That's what I'm saying. How could you be this dumb? That's what I'm, I don't get it. How are you this stupid? She was bragging about being on the podcast about being a white supremacist and bringing it into the school and you know and lying to administration about it so she just couldn't have been dumber there's lots of screenshots on Huffington Post of her tweets where she's saying stuff like it isn't supremacist or hateful to prefer your own people over others that's literally what it is white people I don't even get it she doesn't believe in white privilege no surprise she doesn't believe in systemic racism. Really, girl? Are you kidding me? This, are we on Mad TV right now? <laughs> do, you, do you believe in oxygen? Do you believe in electricity? Do you believe in... What? Oh, man. Yeah, I think at this when it, when this first came out, they were like, oh, we can't, you know, we can't comment on it. But at this point, everybody knows who the fuck she is. And so... She sounds like one of them greasy looking white bitches that be on claws. You Have know you ever what? watched that? No, I've seen like one episode and I know exactly what the fuck you're talking about. It's, honestly, she sounds like one of these bitches in uh, I, or Indiana or Iowa or whatever the fuck that was. She probably got dial up babies. at home and that's why she don't know nothing. She's, about. she's honestly terrible. If you go to Huffington Post, they had the exclusive story about it. And when I tell you they took screenshots of all of these tweets, they... They um, downloaded some of the audio from her podcast and reposted it on SoundCloud because I'm sure she's deleted that SoundCloud by now. But bitch, it's too late. The Internet never forgets screenshots. Don't forget your own voice. Your own voice. I just can't imagine. And she was even saying shit like more white supremacists need to take jobs as teachers and administrators and and be covert and just get in there and start spreading your views, you know, in small ways to these kids. This is and these are the people that Donald Trump wants to give guns to. I mean, and honestly, she's in Florida, so she could have easily been a teacher with a yeah. pistol. Yep. And who knows what she would have done under the wrong circumstances who knows what she could have it's just it's unfathomable to me that 
not even that somebody could be this racist and then choose to like take on a job that means that you are responsible for helping children learn and grow and be better people. Like it's a middle school social studies class, like social studies, meaning she is probably talking about issues that affect our society and being very biased and hateful and racist about it because that's how she fucking feels. It's not surprising to me that a bitch like that would even make it to the school system. What I came to believe is that you were dumb enough to use your right. real voice. And no, you didn't use no kind of software to alter your voice or nothing like that, bitch. What are you thinking? You used it. your real photo on the internet, bitch. What? How? 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 We've been online for too many years. It's just not. You My Twitter Googled, photo ain't even me. You could have Googled white woman smiling or something and just picked the fifth row down random picture and use that bitch for your avatar. The fact that you used your own real photo and you just and and talked about your life and you were lazy with details about your location and everything else. It's like, are you fucking crazy? Yeah. Are you really out of your fucking mind? Probably. Fuck Diana, Diana, however the fuck you say it. Sis, fuck you all day long. I don't know what I don't know what possesses these hoes. I really don't. But it's crazy because I feel like almost inexcusable. All of us can say that we've had a teacher like this before. They just didn't have hot guys. Right. They were smart enough to be racist in a time where, first of all, everybody wasn't recording every fucking thing. Right. So it wasn't no hard proof like this. And they weren't going out like spreading it where somebody else could hear it. It's just so it reminded me of um, and I tell you, so the Tanya Harden case, the fact that the big dude, whatever his name was, I forgot it. The fact that he was like the one orchestrating the attack or whatever, and then went home and told everybody, oh, you know about that Nancy Kerrigan thing? I did that. Right. The Tanya Harden shit, I was behind that. Like you went around and told everybody, this bitch is going into school every day, being racist on the low, and then going on the internet and telling everybody about it and never thought anybody was going to make the connection. Bitch, how? Bitch, how? I just don't get it. I don't You're either. too dumb to be a teacher. Like, racist, That's I expect. Sadly enough, I expect racism. But you're just too stupid. Especially in some place called Crystal Crystal Water? Crystal River, Florida? Crystal River, Florida. Yeah, I don't know where that is. And since you don't know either, I'm assuming that it's probably Trump country. I don't, I don't really know. But it's just, this makes no sense. This just is, girl, how? How? Honestly, if it's above West Palm Beach, it's definitely Lynch in town. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Lynch and, and town. West Palm is like being gracious. I like how everybody who isn't in like a coastal city, the South and the Midwest and Southwest and all that, we have like the places in the state where you know you can go, you're probably going to be all right. And then everywhere else is basically a sundown town. Yeah. And you just don't. Yeah. And you just do not. I'll never, I always tell a story of like the one time that I drove back from Atlanta with my mom from Atlanta to Florida. Only time, I, I mean, to Miami. The only time I've ever done it, like 13 hours. And we stopped for gas oh. somewhere in the panhandle. Like just a couple of hours after leaving Atlanta. We stopped for gas and just being outside of the car, like I went to go get some chips or something at the gas station. And I remember telling my mother, I'm so uncomfortable. I'm so scared. Like, I want to go yeah. now. It was just me <laughs> That's and her real. and I think my aunt. And I was like, I've never, like, I've been around white people that like clearly make me feel unwanted and gross and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But I felt like in danger. It was the middle of the day, yeah. bright and sunny outside. Like, and those white people looked like at any moment they would have thrown us into the back of a white van. Right. I was ready to leave. That's very real like there we would be warned about you know you just do not want to be caught in certain places after dark you need to have your ass was a couple years in ago. Tulsa or Oklahoma City where there are <laughs> lots of Negroes and the white people are used to seeing Negroes like you just don't want to stop in small town USA because you never fucking know what you're going to run into with these people so fuck Diana I just again girl can't believe you were that dumb about your racism really can't believe you used your real photo on the internet furthermore how could you feel about anybody taking your advice or anything that you've said seriously when you did something so stupid too right like why would I ever take anything that you have to say like as anything right like you're very dumb like <laughs> 
You're very. You made it so easy to be caught. Really stupid. <laughs> You've only been teaching there for a year. <laughs> like I'm gonna go get my racism <laughs> elsewhere. Thanks. <laughs> Girl, it's a public podcast. You didn't think maybe everybody who was listening was not a fan of yours. And when they heard you were a teacher, was like, huh, let me see if I can start drawing the lines right. together and figure out who this bitch is. Wow. Stupid bitch. But my read this week goes out to someone I'm going to call Shebeki. <laughs> Shebeki um, worked at the venue at our Boston show. And oh, bitch. <laughs> Let's do it. So Shebeki really tried my life with her white nonsense at the show. And it was nothing but the grace of Beyonce that led me out of it. She like, irked me the whole evening. And calmly. So we were in uh, the dressing room, you know, before the show started. And I pulled out a bottle of wine and opened it because I do like me some red wine. Right. So it was sitting up on the counter when Shebeki walked in and she said, oh, that has to go away. Like, we can't have any alcohol alcohol on the premises blah, blah. and I was like wine counts as alcohol and she was like yeah sorry da 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 like it's very important my job could be on the line sort of thing and I said okay girl no problem put it back in my backpack since apparently it was that big of an issue left it alone we went out did the show had a great time come back backstage everybody's getting their things together so I pulled out my bottle of wine because I'm finna drink it on the right. sprinter on right. the way back I'm finna enjoy it get fucked up have a good time so everybody is like getting their things together. We're literally getting ready to, to walk, walk out. out of the door. Like there's no longer anybody in the auditorium. Shout out to whichever one of you was so drunk that you threw up on the seats because Shebeki had to clean it up. Good. And I appreciate you for that. But she came backstage, saw that I had my coat and backpack and bottle of wine and was like, uh, homegirl, the wine. Right. And I feel like everybody in the room stopped. It turned around and was like, wait a minute. I was actually in the dressing room next to it, but I heard it. <laughs> and I literally did like a 180 turn and froze. I said, wait a minute. It was like instantly. You know how some, sometimes somebody says something to you and you just immediately like heart rate goes up. Yeah. You start sweating and feeling hot and yeah. angry because you're like, I know this white bitch did not just say, uh, homegirl, yeah. the wine. Like, well, first of all, so what I said to her is like, well, first of all, we're literally leaving. You pointing out this bottle of wine is pointless. The event is over. Everybody is shutting down. We are walking out of the building. There is no longer a threat to you or your job or anything else as far as that concern is concerned. You just want to be a bitch. But secondly, who the fuck is your homegirl? <laughs> I'm looking for, I turned around. I said, where's your homegirl at? I don't yeah. see her. Asante was like, I swear to God, I was going to jump in. And I was like, no, Crystal can handle it. She got it. She got it. I'll leave her alone. I know she could do it. But I was just like, are you? I said to her, like, I don't, I, I'm not sure who you're talking to because I'm not your fucking homegirl. But we're literally leaving. So mind your business. And then Alex jumped, you know how Alex loved yeah. to come in and be a white woman and, and smooth things over. She was like, actually, everything is booked through me. I'm the point of contact. So I would appreciate you not even speaking to her. If you have an issue, then you come to me about it. But don't even say nothing to her. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know your name. So I just said that. I'm like. What are the chances? At what point tonight did you walk up to Alex and call her homegirl? When did that happen? I would love to know. Bitch, you didn't. Because you didn't say that because you don't know my name. You said it because I'm black and you got me fucked up. It's that type of microaggressive bullshit yep. that white people do all the time. And then when you come at them about it, they be like, I don't understand. What exactly. the, what's the big deal? How are you so mad? Bitch, I'm so mad because how dare you? It is a bottle of fucking wine, first of all. Everybody's and it is corked. Pack. It's corked. Like, it's not even, we're not even open, passing around, drinking. And we are leaving the fucking building. Mind you, the door is like... Three, four. It's feet like away. it's like the dude who drives the sprinter is like outside opening and everything up. Like we are literally leaving, and you made it a point to come back here and say something fucked up and sideways to me. You are just really fortunate that it didn't go any further than what it did because everything inside of me was saying, "Drag this white bitch, yep. like just just destroy her, just call her out of her name, Get, talk about her mama. It don't matter." Like I just I wanted to. <sighs> So badly. I was but it already just, agitated. And when I heard that, I was like, I, it, I'm I going to stay right not, here. White people, y'all have got to do fucking better when it comes to shit like that. If you need to get. No, I'm not even. No, I'm not even going to offer same. any alternatives because you knew what you did. She did something. Well, I had my vape out and it was like on the the table or whatever in the dressing room. 
And I had gone out, but the door had closed and it was locked. So I asked one of the the guys who was working back there if he could open the door and it turns out she was the one with the key. So she comes and she opens the door and she sees it there and she's like, is that what I think it is? And I'm like, we, yeah. <laughs> And she's like, what do you think it is, Shabeki? And she was like, oh, you, we can't have that out. It like it, it can be out or whatever because we can't do that here or whatever. And I was like, okay. And she goes, you can realize if I see it again, it has. I was like, I get it. Are you Goodbye. a teacher or something, right, like, bitch? <laughs> Am I scared of being put in detention? Or you going are not to the, the trunch <laughs> right. Like. I'm not afraid of you, homegirl. Right. And Nobody you're not is speak tearing to me. anything up back here. Nobody is disrespecting your precious little venue. Nobody is in here at all. We're literally leaving, girl. So she had already irked me with that shit. So when I heard the homegirl, I was like, it's best that I beat feet. I said, oh no. Because I said, let me get the fuck out. I said, let me just walk outside. I actually had to walk outside to lower my body temperature because I was so pissed off that she actually came to me on some homegirl bullshit. I'm not your fucking homegirl, bitch. I'm the bitch who just sat here in front. Did you not this whole hour and a half that we sat up here dragging white people and telling them about themselves? Were you not paying attention to any of it? Did you just go sit in the corner and not internalize any of what was said? I can't fathom how you felt comfortable enough coming up to me and saying that to me after that show. But you got the wrong bitch. And I just I really need white people to do better in general. Overall, you have got to, I'm not your goddamn homegirl. Stop calling random black women that you don't know homegirl or a sister or anything else with your little, with your little fake black sense. Keep it, bitch. You got the wrong bitch. Stop it. I just could not believe she did that. And so I called the Shebeki to her face and I don't think she got it, but it's fine. She, she didn't did. have to get it. She didn't have to get it. Of course she didn't. You calling me homegirl. That's not her name. I don't know you like that. So I'm going to just call you whatever the fuck I want to since that's clearly the relationship that you and I have. Bitch, right. fuck you. Well, I'll pass a read. Pass the read like we used to. Okay. I don't know where this is really going to go because I didn't really read it, but it seems fun. Um, This email comes from T. It says, um, okay, look, I'm not trying to assume anything about your physical ability and this is not some ableist diatribe You can't always see what's wrong with people. However, Uh dear white girl on the train, I saw you sprint with the speed of a gazelle to the coveted (laughs) corner seat. I saw you contort the entire fuck out of your body, traversing the bags that sat in your way. I, too, know the comfort of getting a seat on the A train at rush hour when you live in the Heights. Yes, God, it is. That's a blessing. It is factual that it's a blessing. I won't deny anyone their joy. But you have lost your damn mind if you think it's all right to sit your narrow white ass down while this woman who had been in her 70s, though a brilliant example of the power of melanin, had to hold on to two railings to keep herself standing. And I know you saw her. You and the woman made eye contact and then you made eye contact with me. In both those moments of non-physical, non-verbal communication, both myself and the elderly fly sis were asking you to stand the whole fuck up. After witnessing our ask, you slid the fuck deeper into your seat and looked at your phone, probably liking all of Taylor Swift's Insta pics. I hate you. That's what it says in all caps. I hate you. I'm aware that you have been taught your entire life that your comfort is more important than black health. I know that from a young age, people assumed your innocence and grace and treated you as a perfect little angel and those who confront you as monsters. I know that the world is built around for and by people who look exactly like you. And so that seat is to you, your birthright. Oh, but bitch, it's 2018 I'm and this is this. New York <laughs> and you got some fucking nerve. I have a public service announcement for white people listening. White people don't believe your daddy. You do have to stand the fuck up when elderly black people need a seat. A pregnant black woman is a pregnant woman. So get the fuck up. If they are assumed to be over 50, throw some respect on that and add a sir or a ma'am. You can wear a Black Lives Matter shirt and rock the newest Ivy Park, but if you're recognizing black humanity isn't a daily practice, you are a fraud and God shall curdle your skin like spoiled milk. Don't do that to yourself. Yes, we are magic, but we are human and we age and our knees hurt and our backs bend. See us authentically or risk getting cussed the fuck out regularly because I'm unleashed in Trump's America. Love you, Chris Lincoln Fury. Keep on keeping on tea. I love how many people are jazzed up behind this fucking evil Cheeto in the White House. What else can we do? Right. You have to be angry and resist in as many ways as possible. I personally 
only get up for elderly people and pregnant, pregnant women. women and then if there is like a very small child like under seven like like who cannot like, stand up and steady himself you know like when an infant's knees or legs just finally <laughs> unfold right. straight like I will that, get up right it's like oh you I used to be like why do y'all get up for kids but after seeing some children take a tumble on the train, <laughs> I was like, oh, I get it now. Because they little asses just can't stay upright. They can't handle they can't all handle of that it, force. Right. So I'm glad to get up for those three categories of people. Absolutely. Everybody else is every man for themselves. But I really feel like most of us know this. And it's just, I don't know how you can sit on the train with a 70-year-old woman in front of you, black or white or any, any other race. Any color. Because even if she's white, I'm still going to feel that in my heart. Like, bitch, you really going to sit here while knees hurt and God willing I make it to my 70s right. I don't want some little raggedy ass bitch being disrespectful to me empath like I be thinking yes right oh my god my therapist told me the other day I don't know why you act like you're heartless because you're actually very sensitive to same. other people's feelings and same. I was like bitch what but then I thought about it and I was like oh it's true same. like I really am that way I was like maybe I'm this dark because I'm so tired of thinking about everything <laughs> So, but that is just, that is just shit, man. That Plus, there bullshit. are, like, little signs and things, like, on all of the trains that talk about train courtesy and shit. Right. And I know on there it says, hey, elderly people be wanting to sit down. Right. Pregnant women, feet be hurting. Right. Like, so... And y'all be running to get on the train so you can sit down before they can. Sprinting. Trash. Sprinting. It's just garbage. And the girls be acting like, oh, so you're just a lift girl now. <laughs> like, I don't even <laughs> want to deal with all that fuck shit. It's a lot. It is, but I still carry my ass on the train. I'll do it sometimes. Pretty, I pretty much take the train every day, especially when I, I have can. to come down to the studio because I will not fight Manhattan traffic to come down to the studio. I, I do. just, I don't know how you tolerate it. It would drive me crazy to sit in a car and not move. I cannot do it. I'm so, so okay with it. I really, can, it bothers the hell out. I would get on that train and just zone out as much as possible. The train is like the same thing except it stinks and it stops <laughs> and there are a billion people around you doing all kinds of I can't of even defend things. MTA because MTA is garbage but <laughs> the train at least swoops its ass right through the city and if you're lucky it, right if you are lucky and there are no ridiculous delays for some unknown reason then the train can be a very efficient way to get downtown and Brooklyn and everywhere else or if there's not a rat b-boy box party yeah there's too many boxing. there's too many times that it, it's a tra- it's a rat just a cipher. train wreck phone, right? there's too many times where you're on the train is like we have been delayed because two niggas at Spring Street decided to start fighting and the police are investigating it's just like I don't have time for this we're using the point you just don't even react to it anymore you're like okay I'm just take long. <laughs> right? like, oh, do I have just a signal let up. me text my boss I am stuck <laughs> on the fucking A a video went viral um, and a, a lot of people laughed at it and I did too until I realized what it was so there was a video of this man taking a picture of a rat infestation in his apartment Oh no, don't do this. And um, don't do this to me cuz the mice love to come inside in the winter. Right. And oh, they're it, already all over the place. Right. See? And it wasn't just a mouse. They were rats. Oh, oh no. And they were more it was like 5 or okay. 6. Okay. All right. Was this in the city? Yes. Oh, and God. there's the reason why I'm bringing this up. Um <laughs> I feel like I know where this is going. And, and <laughs> however, it was, you know, people laughed about it. However, a one-year-old got bit. You got me uh, every uh, corner of the fucked rat. up. Now, the apartment building, it was a project building or a building sponsored by New York City Housing Authority oh, in the Bronx. Lord. Of course. And um, they <laughs> apparently, you know, they didn't do anything about it. Of course not. And also, um, going forward, we found out today that a lot of people who live in NYCHA housing, if you don't live in New York City, NYCHA housing is the projects, and it's all over the city, that Con Edison couldn't go into basements and stuff of them because I of just read this story today. today. I what? knew you were going to bring this up. Con Edison rose their light bill um, higher because they couldn't actually read the meter. So they, they had to pay in, like a... a 
some sort of a fee, like, an, and they yeah. added on a fee for the tenants. Oh, the right, because their basement the, was infested. Because the meter right. readers can't access. Yeah, the Yeah, because their basements were infested. Oh, that's a fee for NYCHA. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, it should and, be. <laughs> and so I, I read this because outside of the internet and stuff, I work in the housing crisis, and I'm, I'm always like fascinated how different ways New York City lies about their progressiveness. Oh, wait. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> I am just loving and this. And continuously <laughs> shows every day how racist they can be. I yeah. am loving this, and <laughs> and I'm like, we have to. We have to do something about it. Like, there is no way that a one, there's no reason why a one year old, a beautiful brown baby, should have been bit and have to go through. Can you imagine? And all this good stuff. That is so fucked up. And and you see, like, the father holding one of them, like, and this a rat the size as big as like nope, nope, nope. Lyrica, and so <laughs> I'm going home. I'm going home. But <laughs> that was actually it for me. That was the last fucking straw. I'm fucking out of here. Bitch, not lyrical. But my point is this. <laughs> I'm fucking finished. I can't even. Put your put oh your coat back. Oh my god, there's something fucking wrong with you. <laughs> uh, but my point is this: New Lord. York City again proves yes. ev- proves how racist it is. Yes. I realize when I take the train every day, none of the train problems happen in the rich white neighborhoods. True. They always happen in the hood. It's never on the other there's, side. There's never, there's never no damn police activity on 72nd Street. Never. There's never no um, signal problems <laughs> at fucking um, Fulton or like sick passenger on like, I don't know, 96th Street or anything like that. Oh, yeah. 96th Street is like your last stop before everything goes haywire. Before the Absolutely. Goes haywire, right. <laughs> so I just, my whole thing is, I guess, the read is for New York City. Like, this this city proves itself to be racist in more ways than one. Mm-hmm. And white people have have specialized in finding new ways to be racist mm-hmm. and to oppress us just when we think we have it like figured out. Yeah. Like, okay, like, okay, you're gonna do this because like, oh, the job, like, okay, he's using whiteness to like, yeah, I'm so mad. Like me, 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 me. And like or whatever, like this woman who looked like Katy Perry. I totally thought it was Katy Perry who called the cops on that little boy. Uh, oh my God. But you know, those type of things. We see those every day. But then they just develop new shit to be racist right. and keep us down. It's just you like say girl. <laughs> Why the fuck? Like, <laughs> let it go. Like, I get it. You're upset. You don't want to be othered. But, like, people have a right to have a decent place to live. Like, yes. baby shouldn't have to be fighting, you know, like, Master Splinter and shit. Right. You know, it's just it's just disheartening. And when people say, like, you know, I want to move to New York. What should I do? Girl, don't. First of all. <laughs> Like, this is the shit Thank that we you. have to deal with First because <laughs> you know, it's so aggressive. It's so progressive. No, it's literally racist. It's just different means and modalities of how they're racist. I mean, I will say I much prefer New York's racist over the oh, South. Sure. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. sure. I'm not. There's racism <laughs> everywhere. Right. Here, there, and everywhere. And all right. kinds. But you ain't never going to hear me talking about New York like it's some sort of magical utopia that you know we just don't it's have scam. any of the problems of the rest of the country it is that is not it girl it is a Nigerian and it's scam so okay. from up. Craigslist <laughs> It's so fucked up because you know there are more than enough extremely wealthy people in this city for housing authority to never have a rat infestation problem. Like, there is more than enough money. There's more than enough resources. It's just not properly distributed or managed or handled because people who don't give a fuck about the common man are the ones running everything. Absolutely well, kids not. and friends should be able to brush their teeth. I mean, you know yeah. Clear well, water, but you know what? I feel like there's money there. But I, I just say... I live for everything that yes. you just said. Thank you for telling me about this story because I did not know. Yeah. I did not know that there was a one year old that was bitten. Yeah. I read this the the story about the Con Ed raising yeah. the the price or whatever that, earlier today. And, and literally just as a motherfucker. Oh, bitch, period. Oh my god, my Con Ed bill is re- they actually sent me a letter saying why are you using more energy than everybody else on the block? And I'm yeah. like, well, bitch, I don't know. And then they have this thing now where you can like pay like the the managed fee. 
thing. Oh, I don't know what that is. Last time I paid my bill, they asked me did I want to donate a dollar to somebody having trouble paying their bill. And I was like, okay, I like that. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that is nice. But then I'm also like, are y'all really going to give my dollar to somebody? <laughs> that's a valid You're gonna give it to question. one of them fucking big that's wigs sitting in the Con Ed office not doing fucking shit. Fucking question. <laughs> Ordering Postmates all day. But when I read that shit, I was like, so wait a minute. You mean to tell me that these niggas got this building that they clearly don't give a fuck about right. that is in like Infested. One rat, one rat it's is bad many. enough yes. for me. Right. One okay. rat is a thousand, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, okay, so. because there are babies. Somewhere. New York rat, about the size of the smack book oh, in New no York. God. Right That's right. enough for me. The fact that there is Went a to college new with four of them. Hello. <laughs> The fact that the basement is so infested Ooh. that they are in a unable to go and look at the meter. It's disgusting. How was that my fault? And I live like, here. I'm paying like, punished. Pe- I'm punished enough. Right. And people who live in public housing don't have the money to pay this. Duh. Right. So it's, I just could not believe that I read that. And I read that, you know, like the whoever from Con Ed who spoke about it, ne- like they said that it was never mentioned whether they would be reimbursed or not. I was like, of course they're, they're not, not going to get them their motherfucking going to money do back. That. And they're just going to say that they're looking into it or whatever fucking vague ass excuse that they're going to do. They give when they know they're not going to do shit about it. It's just like everything that you just said. And like the interim, the interim NYCHA chairman was like, he admitted the other day. He was like, some days I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And it's like, uh, okay, no, that's a problem. We need, we definitely, the president. Okay, no, we're going to need somebody who knows what they're doing. Let a little white baby in motherfucking Lincoln Square have been (laughs) punctured by by a rat to news. Are you kidding me? The baby would have had a scholarship from Ellen. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Child would have been on Ellen the next fucking day. Hello? Hello? See, I feel like even because like you said, housing authority is all over the city, but I feel like it's worse in places like the Bronx. Like you hear these really bad yeah. stories coming from deep in the Bronx or Brooklyn or whatever, because it's like the spots that. Yeah, the Bronx, is, the Bronx, the city is, just truly do not give a fuck it about does people. that. There's 300 shelters in the Bronx. Housing shelters. See. I mean, yeah. And how many and, empty apartments are in New York City right now? Oh, um, we don't have all. See, yeah, we don't have all night to housing. do this, but thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> I was just, That's when I read much. that shit earlier today, I said, I don't want to hear no more, you know, born and bred New Yorkers say nothing to me when I'd be like, this fucking city, man. Yeah. Trash on trash like, on trash. I, I truly love New York. I really do. But my God, there's some yeah. shit here that is. And, I, and I've lived here for about 15 years. And, and every day I'm just like, I, I can't believe I live here. And then I can't believe I live here. There's so much great about it. But to act like... There aren't things that make no sense. Right. Yeah. Like every place has its ups and downs and you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? And some yeah. places have more on one side or the other. But to act like some of the downs on this city are not absurd. It's not yeah. even just that it's like, oh, you know, it sucks that like, for instance, LA has trash traffic. You know what I'm saying? Like, but Which is true. With it, yeah. And it's a fact. You right. know what I'm saying? How you can go about fixing that if it's even able to be fixed is one right. thing. But like, there's just some stuff about here that just, it it yeah. doesn't make sense. It shouldn't yeah. happen. And it's constantly just looked over. Yeah. Well, I hope that family can sue because I'd be damned. I hope so. Let a rat bite my A baby. rat bit my baby? And y'all been knowing this building was infested and you ain't had nobody out here? I'm taking out a block. I'm taking, Okay. This is about to be my project. They about to rename this whole tower after me, bitch. Hello? <laughs> this whole fucking thing, bitch. Let me just go ahead, right here and write down my baby's name because that will be <laughs> yes. the name of the street. Print it mm-hmm. just like that. Thank okay. you so much. LaToya Nicole Housing <laughs> Project. <laughs> Terrace. Yeah. Yes. You always a terrorist. Always Fuck a terrorist. Always Hello? A terrorist. It's always a terrace. God bless me in this moment, this journey I'm attempting to take. That's good. Um... Kevin Hart is no longer. Oh no! Really? Going to host the Oscars after some uh, homophobic tweets that he sent out in the years of like 2011, 10, all kinds of years because homophobia knows no bounds. Um, those resurfaced. Including a tweet where he says, yo, if my son comes home and tries to play with my daughter's dollhouse, I'm going to break it over his head and say in my voice, stop, that's gay. 
um, lots of uses of the word fag and other homophobic things, of course. Um, the Academy allegedly asked Kevin to apologize for the tweets uh, before hosting the show. He decided instead to step down from hosting it Um Apparently, he didn't like being told what to do, or he didn't want to apologize, <gasps> even though he did apologize stuff. later, whatever. Mm-mm. So, I mean, if you've been paying attention to the show, if you listen to this show, at the very least, I would like to think that you were kind of under a basic understanding of where this whole thing has been going. So, let's give all, over all of that, because I have so many feelings, so many layers involving this particular situation. Where to begin? Um... First of all, I want to say that, okay, as far as Kevin and the, the the situation itself goes, I'd just like to remind a lot of y'all that Kevin Hart will be fine. He wasn't sent to death. Um, <laughs> Kevin Hart was not, like, you know, maimed or mangled or castrated in the process of this whole thing. In fact, um, he wasn't even fired. He made the decision to yeah. not host this award show. You know, um, the Academy, whoever is producing the Oscars, did not call Kevin and say, because you said fag in 2010, you can't come. He was reportedly asked to apologize. He chose not to do it. Like, now, first of all, I want to remind y'all, like, from my perspective, I could totally see the producers of this fucking event going, coming to Kevin and being like, look, I don't know if, you, if you've been checking the temperature of the Oscars over the past couple of years, honey, but it has been great for us. Just a couple of years ago, we had Jada and the Blacks saying that they weren't coming. You know, <laughs> Harvey Weinstein raped half the goddamn planet last oh year. The ladies God. weren't coming. Like, this year, the gay, we just would really like to have an event where everybody just come and they wear what they want to wear and we don't have to have a, a color for the night or a hashtag for the night. <laughs> Could you just clear this shit up so we don't have to have this conversation in the future? We just want to just give away some awards. That's nope. it. I mean, fucked up. Kevin didn't want to do that. So cool. That was his decision. That's what he wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, <sighs> them niggas are like, Pose just came out. Girl, like, we don't... We're not doing it. We don't have time for no, this. No, we're not just doing apologize. it. just apologize. He didn't want to do that. So... Ugh. Cool. He made his decision. Here we are. We're moving forward with it. Now, I would like to say personally, as far as his homophobic tweets go, I don't care. Um, I've said before that I think like the whole old tweet, look at what you said eight, nine, ten years ago thing is uh, sort of stupid. I would, though, like to play point out, though, that Kevin Hart is uh, is damn near 40. So unlike pulling out Cardi B's old tweets or Sizz's old tweets or even Young Miami's dumbass and her old tweets, <laughs> like... <laughs> Kevin Hart in 2010 was 31. Which is grown. You know, um, Cardi B. Really? Oh my God. (gasps) That was 2010 was eight years ago. It was, honey. Oh my God. Here we (laughs) are. Okay, sorry. Here we are. (laughs) Oh my God, I wasn't ready. Okay. 2010, Cardi B was what, like 19, 18 years old? Yeah. So, (laughs) you know, and she's not too bright today. So, but that's neither here nor there. Don't do that. (laughs) I, much like I've said before, you know, I'm not, I'm old enough and I've been gay long enough to just kind of understand homophobia uh, as as what it is. It's not shocking to me that somebody um, as niggardly as a Kevin Hart feels the way uh, that he does and has expressed um, himself about homophobia or the LGBTQ community in the way that he does. Like Young Miami, I'm not about to campaign against you or them fucking Oscars over that shit. I'm just not going to support you. And I was already over your antics because of the Cowboys and Indians party that you had. And not even that, the response to it because like, as I said about the party when we talked about it I saw it in pictures and I was like it is one a great idea but <laughs> I didn't think he was going to basically come back and say y'all can suck my dick about it so I already wasn't in a, a great place feeling that way and I've never enjoyed Kevin Hart as the host of anything you know what I'm saying like anything I wouldn't want him to see him host the uh, grand opening of a new Foot Locker I don't want to see Kevin Hart host anything I've said that already so this to me just felt like a win-win you know like <laughs> Came for the gays, came for the natives, didn't want to apologize for nothing, thought you were too good. Now, I don't even have to watch you on this award show that I wanted to watch anyway, because as a new member of the Writers Guild of America, you know, they've been sending me all kinds of like little DVDs and freaks. I've been getting scripts oh, for the yeah, films look and things. At you. I was like, Link, you know, they, they, they want me to consider the girls Bad now. Like, the the and I was like, shit. oh my goodness. Mm, so I said, well, you know, I would actually like to watch the Academy Awards and like have an opinion. If Lady Gaga is going to yeah, take away a, an award. Yeah. 
So now that I don't have to watch Kevin Hart, you know, <laughs> he yuck through that whole ass goddamn <laughs> ceremony. <laughs> like, fine for me. Now, oh my God. down to like the meat of the situation, is Kevin Hart homophobic? Like, do, do those tweets make him homophobic? Once again, I would just like to start by saying that I personally don't give a shit and I don't know. Um, mm, I would guess yes. I would guess. <laughs> Um, that it's not looking great. I know lots of his friends and fans would like for us to feel differently, although he literally said on the same ass uh, stand-up thing that one of yeah. his biggest fears yep, is it. that his son would be gay. Yep, he definitely said Gay that. fears. Homophobia. <laughs> like the words are they just... <laughs> you know, that's how it is. Tori Hart's black ass is up oh on here. Oh my Tory God. Tori Hart. I couldn't believe that shit. Went into hair and makeup, my nigga. Did she? Did she go into hair and makeup? Barely went into hair and <laughs> makeup, my nigga. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> to go on Inside Edition Woo! and shed tears. That was so ugly. Over this nigga not hosting the fucking award show. <laughs> my kids. That was so ugly. I have seen this. So you're, wor- you're crying over your kids seeing a daddy not being able to host the- or choosing not to host the Oscars right. again. But like... The whole part about him joking about bussing them over the head with dollhouses? That was nothing. Oh, because that was a joke. Okay, great. Um, Mm-mm. Here's the thing. I think that, like, the whole Caucasian idea of I would not actually act out these different forms of violence against these people so I'm not this thing. That's so dumb. It's just like... Just because you would not actually beat your son for being gay, if we're even to believe you. Right. For saying that. Does not mean... Right. I don't. Right. (laughs) Does not mean that you are not perpetuating that same bullshit happening constantly. You think that just because you would not actually bust a dollhouse over your fucking baby's head, that plenty of the people who are laughing at you saying it would not do it or have not done things like that? Allegedly, you wouldn't. You think that there aren't little gay kids that are getting their ass beat every fucking day right now for being gay but it's a joke cool so Tori Hart you can shut up everybody who feels that way y'all can also shut up like you don't get to claim to be tolerant or cool with gay people black people dark skinned women women in general Asian people like you don't get to do any of that because you just you know don't go on a killing spree you know like that's we're not applauding that sorry girl so in a nutshell, Kevin Hart and his homophobia and him dealing with the consequences of his homophobia by no longer hosting this uh, award show. Fine as wine in my book. Couldn't care less. That man will be fine. He's a working engine. Like, Kevin Hart is is a train of jobs. Yeah. Okay? Not only does he have many offered to him constantly, he creates many for himself and for others. So, Kevin Hart, people talking about, well, Tori had to go on Inside Edition to protect the back. Ha, 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 ha. Like, that no, fucking Oscars, ch- like, listen, listen. Tori went on Hendrix- Inside Edition because Inside Edition asked. And Tori was like, what, somebody's asking? Furthermore, I wouldn't be surprised if Tori or her, whoever works with or alongside Tori sent out some emails like, would anybody like to yep. hear my opinion? Would not be surprised I'd, at all. I like, would not. Like, nope. I don't think that somebody at Inside was like, let's hit up Tori. They probably hit up Kevin and Aniko <laughs> and got a uh, dial tone and was like, well, who else? Tori still got the last name Hart. Let's ask her for her opinion. Right. Girl, go back in the house. Yeah, gross. <laughs> Kevin Hart will be just fine. I don't know why y'all are acting like this. Actually, I do. Anyways. Yeah. Let's get back into because I feel like what was more like... What affected me more from this situation really had less to do with Kevin and his... Uh, his tweets or his reaction to any of it or whatever. Like he did pretty much the same thing that he has done for a lot of his career in these situations, which is start by saying, I'm not going to do it. I don't have to apologize for these things. Y'all are just being negative, laugh, find something to be positive about. And then did go on to say whatever about, I right. I, I want to bring people together. My whole mission is to bring people together. And I'm sorry if I've hurt anybody, whatever, whatever, which is like, you could have done that in the Rolling Stone interview. You could have done that when at the Academy Awards asked you to do it, but yeah. you wanted to do what you wanted to do. Cool. You did it you're going to be fine or rich regardless. And Kenzo is adorable. So let's move on into all of the ways that the rest of you niggas got on my nerves. First of all, I would just like to take the pettiness um, and just like, let's start with the the pettiest portion, in my opinion, the pettiest okay. portion of this whole thing. White people. Now, 
<laughs> I'm getting off the bike. I said this on Twitter already, but I actually found it quite funny that that white people immediately rushed to get him chopped over some homophobic tweets from 2009, 2010, 2011, whatever, but had nothing to say when he gave his whole scrotum to the Native American community. Let me tell you something. I can't think of a year in recent memory where we have not discussed the genocide of the indigenous people who lived here. Like, there hasn't been a Columbus Day or a, a Thanksgiving that I could think of in, like, the recent... The past however many years where we haven't had an internet wide reminder from people like, hey, just a quick reminder of this day that you're celebrating today is a uh, complete bullshit. Here's what white people actually <laughs> did to us. Just so you know, still feeling the effects of it today. Quick reminder. So I refuse to believe that nobody nobody Mm. in production at the Academy Awards was privy to the Cowboys and Indians party happening on Thanksgiving, the backlash to the party, Kevin Hart's response to the backlash, the backlash to Kevin Hart's response (laughs) to the backlash, (laughs) Kevin Hart's response to the backlash to Kevin Hart's response to the backlash, or the backlash to Kevin Hart's response to the backlash to Kevin Hart's response to the backlash. I refuse to believe that nobody within that like the weeks or week in in some change that all of that stuff was going on back and forth Kevin Hart on his own platforms told Native Americans to suck his dick and nobody said anything about that he got to announce his hosting right after that okay it wasn't a matter of hours that they were like you know who should host this (laughs) Kevin let's call him and ask him what he thinks and even if that was how it happened my nigga you could have immediately gone to his social media and seen him trying to drag people so I don't even understand like you're not gonna convince me that nobody in production not a single white face over there (laughs) didn't know about what the fuck was going on with that that's first but the day (laughs) the day that white folks unearthed them homophobic tweets from yesteryear, they wanted an apology. What? I Peak white activism. <laughs> because let me tell you something. If each and every single one of those tweets and comments that Kevin Hart had made were specific to black gay people, he'd still be hosting. Nobody would ask him to do anything. Because yep. the fact of the matter is, white people could be gay, they can't be Native Americans. <laughs> So they had no issue with that because you wouldn't talk about them. Oh, but let me tell you something. You won't be coming for the the white gays. They've got real estate up in this Hollywood shit, bitch. Mm. Whether you know them or you don't know them. And you're not coming for them, their their friends, their family. You're not coming for lots of the Me Too girls who were at the Oscars last year. You won't come for their brunch buddies. You won't come for their personal shoppers. They're not going to let you come for their white gays. And white gays ain't going to let you come for them. If it was us, though, specifically us Negro gays. There would be no issue because white gays don't give a fuck about, about us unless they want some dick. No. So. And you would be done to think otherwise because they literally did not give a fuck about the Native Americans a week and a half prior to this. Not to mention so many of y'all overlooking our existence, which I will get to in a second. But I just wanted to point out, so white. So white. The whole thing happening in itself is such a, a white thing. And I just wanted to let y'all know, once again, Caucasians, I peeped y'all. But once again, it does. I mean, it doesn't really it's not going to slide us here too much off course here because right. so many things. So many things. 